This video is brought to you by friend of the channel Squarespace. Stick around to learn more about how their intuitive website creation tools help people turn their hobbies into careers and dreams into reality. It is, it is pretty. It is very it's, impressive. Yeah, it's, it's very sharp. sharp. Felt it in yes. my skull bone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, no one has ever seen <gasps> Stu before. Oh, yeah, yeah, Stu, get back out here. Get out here, Stu. Get out, get out here, Stu. Stu. Okay. So this is, this is Stuart. Hi, he is the editor of the Friends Per Second podcast and also one of the editors on the Skill Up channel. So he lives in San Fran, which is why he's here now. He's yep. come down to visit. So good to have you here, man. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely, lovely people. Thank, Thank you for you inventing for... friends per second. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you did that. That was yeah, really cool. It's very, very good. Founder. No, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And thank you for the clicking thing. That was very professional. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, really, that was a real yeah. nice start. Yeah, this, this setup is with very unusual for us. Yeah. Like we're like, hey, let's just upgrade our little setup a little bit because usually we have like the hotel thing and mm. like the, the lighting is garbage and whatever. We're like, you know what? Let's spend a little bit of money this time and let's get a little logo up and behind yeah. us. And we have a proper recording studio and it's nice. We're I don't think I've ever been in this type of like podcasting like this is like a real totally a podcast yeah. room, yeah. Podcast room, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I mean, like... We had the old like giant bomb stuff in the yeah. office. Yeah, um, very similar vibe to this. I feel like I could because it's so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so the sound the yeah. padded. I yeah, feel like totally. I just I really want to scream and just see what that would be like. Yeah. I won't. Yeah. Oh, we'll use, it, use it as a scream room. I, like a, I feel like, I feel like <laughs> a real <laughs> podcaster now. Yeah, right. I wanna, I'm bring that up, Jamie. Yeah. Say <laughs> yeah. I was about yeah. to say I feel like Joe Rogan, <laughs> but then I, I didn't want to be like that. Who's guy. got some weed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Someone put a flag up behind us, quick. You know? Someone did. Um, everyone's been posting their Spotify wraps, and it's been mm. first of all amazing to see how many people, how many users have. Shout outs. Yeah, Shout I appreciate out that. It's nice. Um, <laughs> I got friends for a second on there. And then one person tweeted us. I'm like, you guys beat Joe Rogan. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. I, I can beat him in a fight, too. <laughs> yeah, really easy. Done. Well, uh, we're here. This is Friends Per Second, episode 35. It's yeah. at some point in December. Mm. We're here. I'm Jake Baldino. This is Skill Up. This is Lucy James. And special goblin guest. Yes. The GOAT. To more Hussein. Oh, the all once of the, again. All the, the in person ones. You've been on every in person. Yeah. I, think. I think so. Yeah. 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 Thank you for now. having me once yeah. again. I appreciate it. We don't mess with tradition. So, you know, yeah. that's just I don't like think we tradition. even ask anymore. No, yeah. we just yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, it would be really great. Could you do us a favor? No, I was just like, yo, here's the calendar. Where are you? I really appreciate it. Yeah. I enjoy being on this one, especially because also the community is really nice, like around it. So it's like, and let's be honest, there's some real nasty podcast communities out there <laughs> so this is the one time where i like refresh my energy and be sure. like podcasts can be good and obviously i love talking to you guys and yeah, yeah, so yeah awesome. so You're thank the best. you for having me uh we're all here because of the game awards mm. we're in town I was gonna say, you just said for the game it's, awards it's at some point in december is the day after the game it awards boys. yes thank you it is oh. the morning well actually it's the afternoon now but it was the morning after the game awards very was recently it, was it the morning after? <laughs> we skipped the morning I, in was bed. Gonna say. I think you can pinpoint it by going back and listen to the difference in voices oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh God. i can see <laughs> i had to record so i recorded my my new show yesterday and then i had to add in today all the game award stuff so it's like a harsh voice change <laughs> yeah. like it's just like harsh and like <laughs> circles under my eyes yeah <laughs> um, definitely because yeah I, we we have a new show as well and we usually record it on thursdays go for fridays and uh work we're like oh are you guys gonna do spot on from <laughs> nope. la and i was like no <laughs> no. <laughs> no definitely not so, uh, yeah, I think we're going to kind of go in depth with the whole show. Mm -hmm. uh, we have yeah. a really cool interview and stuff. Yeah. So uh, kicking it off, the general ceremony, the, the thing itself. Uh, the award speeches were pretty short. Oh, uh, dude. Let's just rip the Band-Aid off with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, overall, I like, I, as, a, as a spectacle, it's a fun show. Mm. But there were definitely points in it where I was like, has it forgotten that it's called the Game Awards? And I genuinely wonder, because I noticed this year more than ever, Jeff was referring to it as TGAs. Yeah. He kept saying TGAs. Yeah. And I was like, I've never picked up on him doing that before. And I wonder mm. if it's part of a, a sort of You a think he's like doing a, a like a subtle like yeah. Brainwashing thing. Like, oh, I'm gonna yeah, get yeah, them yeah. I'm gonna get them to forget this is an award yeah. show. It's just TGA now. Like, mm. yeah, right, okay. Like when Kentucky Fried Chicken just went KFC because they don't want to have the word fried in their name. Is that what you think it is? Is that, is that why that happened? Wow. Well, I, I assume so. 
I mean, right? Damn, it worked though. Yeah. Exactly. Like used to be Kentucky, <laughs> Kentucky fried white. chicken. Oh, I shouldn't eat so much fried chicken. But KFC. Just holding but KFC. A, <laughs> KFC. Just holding a bucket of drum. Is this grilled? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I always thought that this everyone knew this about KFC. No. I, maybe I just made, maybe this is my own headcanon that I made up KFC about like, what's yeah. why, <laughs> why they did this. He knows the 11 herbs and spices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It definitely um, felt like, uh, like it, it was the rattling off of like all the cool awards that like people yeah. voted for and people like debated online. It I was mean, like, oh. here's best blank, and then it was like, he got to a point too where he was rattling them off fast and not even pausing between them. Well, that's the thing. Like yeah. when like, Larian won like two or something in a row, because <coughs> we would like sat over the aisle from them. They were all just like they all stood up and went yay, and then that was <laughs> it. And so if you if you'd won that award, and like Alan Wakeford, Art Direction yeah, too, they just, so it was just like. Yeah. I, they don't get that moment. And even yeah, any totally. of you did one, you didn't get that moment. But we did get to see 10 minutes of Kojima and Jordan Peele. <laughs> My good friend. And just broing out. It's just yeah. like, hey, what's Simulu up? We're doing things. And what? Mackie and... Yeah. I mean, I think the Fallout bit was good i mean like, it was loud as oh, it was so loud loud. oh my world. god <laughs> my ears i honestly felt like i had to do this for that one because i was just yeah yeah I any mean, any trailer with speech in it i don't know about you but where we were sitting it felt like really weirdly like balanced i couldn't anytime someone spoke in a trailer i could barely hear oh, what right, they were right, saying right. it was like really weird yeah but as for like the show overall i, I also think like not to i'm not trying to defend it at all i'm just saying like this is a fact that that is happening Every year, there's a different set of expectations on what that show needs to do. It's always and a it, shifting yeah, conversation. It's a shifting and evolving conversation, and it's often an important one. But I think it's also a symptom of being the only game in town, right? Like he's there's no other awards that on that scale. There's the mm. the kind yeah. of like, like but, dice I mean, awards there's and there's that kind BAFTA, of stuff. There's Joystick, dice, dice. exactly. GDC, but like, like this, they, no one has those yeah. those kinds of expectations on those in the same way. And I feel like it's it's <coughs> it's the double edged sword of presenting yourself as the kind of face of video games in the larger media landscape as mm. Jeff has done. Mm. If you're gonna do that, you kind of are also accepting the burden of having being having to respond to those shifting conversations because there was a lot of expectations. After last year it was like, oh, you know, a, a lot of time was spent with people doing long speeches, so the reaction was to cut it short. Which is not great, but there's also there was a bunch of other expectations with, you know, the future class thing happening yes. where they mm. put together the, the um kind of open petition, letter. the open yeah. letter, and that wasn't addressed at all. Yes, um, it was in fact that we got like an opening speech that kind of yes, it almost recognized that it happened. Yes, but didn't address it in a. It was like just like mm. not winking and nodding at something, yeah. but without presenting any. So it was like w this brings us together, and it's like that's not the right time to that's yeah you gotta say something true so there's so many like things going on that it, it feels like it will never win like it can never yeah. be like perfect unless it's a split it up yeah yeah but i, but I think that the but split up idea just doesn't work and i see that all the time and i'm like well that just fundamentally there's just no way that would work because no. then oh people would only tune in for the trailers mm -hmm. and then, and then, then that, would, yeah. that's it and i think yeah so i mean yeah like for me personally <clears throat> like i've always kind of i've always been like I've always understood the challenges that Jeff faces with this event. Mm. And I've always kind of, like people say, like, oh, I've been, definitely been accused of being a Jeff apologist. Where, yeah, like, too. I'm like, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, no, look, it's really hard to put this on. It costs a lot of money. Sure, we have to sit through some bullshit fucking commercials and whatever. But, like, he's doing it. And, you're and like, that's important and whatever. But this year, like, they really, like, they really lost me with this event. And I was like really mad halfway through mm. and the point where i got really mad was when like best indie game was announced. oh the cocoon one i know uh, no so that was um Star. best debut oh was it see, oh, that oh, was, see yeah. stars see oh, stars won best indie game with terry and he didn't get to stand up and receive that award and i was like at that point i was just like no fuck this this sucks yeah. you know because that mm. person deserves that moment mm. And the very next cut after that was like they cut straight to a commercial for a gacha game. You know what I mean? Like mm. the contract and like and it's and Jeff's up there and he's like, Oh, I love profiling indies and I really want to use this space to profile indies. And if you can't yeah. give the best indie game of the year the chance to stand up and give a 30 second speech, then no. I mean, mm. and the same with with um best score for Final Fantasy 16 yeah. was Soken. Soken made that music. While yeah. he was going through chemo, yeah. Yeah. and he was writing for two fucking video games, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and he didn't get to receive that. Armored Core won best um, action game, and that community, like that, was a thing 
for them to be recognized. Like that was yeah. a big deal. A lot yeah. of people really like yeah. Armored Core means something to a lot of people. And for From to be able to get up there and receive that award would have been something, you know? Yeah. And not to be the apologist for not the From guy, but like for that team as well. Totally. To yeah. be coming out of a developer known for Souls yes. games. Being able to put your foot down and say, like, we can make these games too. Mm. That's got to be devastating to be like, oh, when, when you make Souls games, it's a big, you know, song and dance that it happens. But when we make an Armored Core game, a niche title franchise with a smaller audience, and we do do it this well, we don't get that recognition. It's, it's unfortunate. Best art direction. Didn't get its moment. Um there was one other one. I can't oh, remember Oh, like now. the community stuff from Community, about from, yep, from Blarin, yep. Mm. But I mean, it's just overall... Oh, did Evolving... Did... Ongoing game ongoing? got is it. that the yeah. one? Because that, was, that was for Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. Which is a whole other like, thing. We should definitely were, come oh, back yeah, to their yeah, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. They but, were behind us and they had the same thing. We were like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I just... On balance, that... All of it really pissed me off a lot. And did it, Jeff so, tweet? He did. Well, so he tweeted about the third... Because what also was revealed was that people were told they only had 30 seconds to receive their award. Yeah. And first of all, 30 seconds is not enough time. It's just not. No. And I go, no, like Chris Judge did the eight minute thing or whatever and made his joke about Call of Duty this year. Yeah. Quite funny. Oh, that, um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's proven very spicy. Is it really? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, a like, lot of, like a yeah. bunch of people who probably who worked on that game were in the audience like, yeah. oh. <laughs> but to be fair, it's very funny. So like, <laughs> let's be real. Objectively it's funny. It's very Objectively funny, you know. very funny. So, um. So, yeah, obviously Jeff did tweet out saying, oh, the 30-second thing was too short. I agree. And mm -hmm. I asked them to relax it later in the show. But by that point, people were already briefed that you only have 30 seconds because yeah. they got an email before, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and so they're all getting up there with their 30-second speeches ready. So I, in the past, as I said, I've understood the balance. I've definitely, you know, defended what was going on and the reasons for it. But this year, the 30-second speeches coupled with so many awards not going directly to people, mm -hmm. having their moment, that I was like, no, this is terrible, yeah. and this I but really, really dislike well, this ceremony. Like, in terms of the actual speeches, if you talk about the the mm. moments that typically get shared, yeah, a lot yeah. of it is Speech. stuff from speeches. And like, as a fan, as a viewer, like the watchability, yeah. like you, those moments, like that's how you get like fuck the Oscars, fuck the Oscars. and like all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you let people cook. But it's also <laughs> like those speeches also serve as a way we we talk to these developers all the time, and most of them are PR trained to stay on beat on mm. point. Mm. They. They're almost like um, robots at times. Yes. These are the moments where you see them as their most human. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like Abu, Abu Bakr Salim was up there. He's a new developer. But like the moment where he's struggling to get through yeah. because, you know, this is a game dedicated to his father. passed away father. father. That was like an important moment. But also like in a year where we've had totally just totally agree. layoff after layoff after layoff. And you want to see the kind of shining stars of the of the industry step up and address that. And like Sam Lake started doing it mm. and he was talking about what it means to be a developer. Mm. And then the get off out of, out of here music begins to play. It's like have a little kind of be in the moment and like pull that back and be like, this is an important thing that needs to happen. The developers are given the opportunity to humanize themselves to people yes. who in a lot of ways, not everyone does this, but spend time treating them basically as video game vending machines. Yes. Like when is this, we're going to get this game, you know, on Twitter, why is this like this, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Like this is a moment where they can speak and be like, this was rough. This took us seven years. No, mm. thank you to the team that did this. Not even letting them have that in a year where it's been awful for the video game totally. industry it seems like <laughs> such a dichotomous like kind yeah. of approach and it's reflected in other parts as well where like you know the uh future class presented by old spice yeah I know. like I award that. comes out and like you're you're profiling on stage the future class and then you go on twitter and the future class members are like we got shoved in the corner we can't see the screen yeah. there's camera jibs in front of us sure. like it's such a Inadvertent, for sure, right? Surely. I just, as an, someone who believes that the show is designed to try and celebrate it, I assume that's inadvertent. But, mm. like, just look at that. Yeah. It, it looks like you're, like, curtailing or you're kowtowing to the commercial side of it more than the human side of it. Definitely. Yeah, I we should have had we should not have had better seats in the future class. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, yeah. No way. Yeah, no put way. us in the back. Put us in the corner. Yeah. It's fine. Whatever, 100%. you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, and I wonder, how, look, and, and I think as well, when I see this conversation online, I definitely see a lot of, oh, it's one, it, like, the because I don't think we're that far from the solution, by the way. No. Like, yeah. I actually think, on balance, 
the idea that we have trailers and also awards is good because yeah. it does bring eyeballs and I like it. And, and I, so I'm not proposing this wholesale shift where we do one thing or the other or whatever, but like just trim off a few trailers, add in a few more things where people get to stand up and receive their awards, mm. give them more time to speak. And then that's your successful award ceremony. That's it. And I don't imagine the discourse is going to swing wildly. I think it's so boring. So many boring speeches. It's like, okay, whatever. Just be patient. You know what I mean? Like give yeah. these people the chance to speak. So I don't know. Also, I, like... I think the fascination with like celebrity, I think, oh, yes. gets in the way. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Every once in a while, I love like a, someone coming out and doing a funny, but like, Timothy Chalamet didn't do anything. Yeah, he and like he awarded Game felt... of the Year. Yeah, yeah. like it's. I'm but like, sorry, but for... no, wh why are you Arwanka. giving away? That's like our. That's should be from the person who won Game of the Year last, last year. year. Yeah. they should yeah. be doing it. What I mean, I don't say? think I don't think Miyazaki. <laughs> I, just, I just refer to Timothy Chalamet as our Wonka. Our yeah, right. our Wonka. <laughs> he also uh, we watched him walk into like a bit of the stage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he went bang, and then I could see him like look to see if anyone was just like us. I also wonder how he felt because like. Larry and just like took the award, just like did not did yeah, not yeah, acknowledge yeah, him yeah, at all. Yeah. Like they just yeah. like and thank you're saying you about you were saying, <laughs> you're saying about the joke as well. Like oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, I mean like if you know like his his past is reviewing that was an internet cut that was deep. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but like that's how he was presented. And so when he walked out, no one was applauding. So <laughs> yeah yeah. Who's like, like, oh, who this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah. I, was, I was like oh okay. But, but yeah, I mean right. like I get that Simu Liu is. A gamer, like he's done game awards before, and yeah. he is in Stormgate. Anthony Mackie's bit was it, like he was just telling people to shut up for, for a long shut time. Up. Like that was weird. And I imagine if you were watching on stream in the audience, it was weird. pretty good. He yeah, was, in the yeah. audience, it was fine. He was doing yeah. some crowd work. Yeah, yeah. but if you yeah. couldn't hear the audience, you just heard this man going, "Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> like um, it'd be like, you know what I mean? Falcon sucks, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just coming out and being mean. Yeah, yeah. But like, very heroic. The Fallout bit. Made a lot of sense to me. It was good mm. to cut to, you know, Todd Howard's there and no <laughs> yeah, one's there. Sure. And then they did that with like Last of Us last year and whatever, but. There was yeah. a missed opportunity with Gonzo when he brought the board with the mm. chicken. Mind place joke. Yeah, that's what I thought it was going to be. Uh, mind board. Uh, yeah. Mind place. Yeah. The other thing is like, I, I, they talked about uh, like, you know, having these people who are celebrities come up as gamers and, you know, like, I love it when I, I played this <laughs> game in my, but like, Abu did the same thing, right? Yes. And talked about the games that he loves. And that was so much more meaningful than, and like, I don't care if Anthony Mackie has played Pong and loves don't video games. Yeah. So it's celebrity. just like, celebrate our celebrities before you celebrate your another medium celebrities. 100% agree. Understand that it, it's not a bit as big of a draw, but like, at least balance it a bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, surprisingly, I mean, Matt Mercer was up there, but like, normally you get like, Laura Bailey or mm. Troy, yeah. your Troy Bakers yeah. or... Like, I mean, Ed Boon, I guess, and, and Vince yeah. Zampella was there. So there, yeah, I guess cool. that yeah. was yeah. some element. That was that? good. Seeing yeah. Vince Zampella up there, I'm like, yeah, that's just the kind of person I want to see up there. Yeah, exactly. And he really kind of like owned that stage and owned that moment. He talks about game mm -hmm. design. You're like, this man knows game design. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> better than anybody yeah. in this fucking room, this man understands game design. And when he talks about it, I want to hear about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, like, and the, the, the elephant in the room is the Kojima Jordan Peele moment. Sure. Which, an amazing, like, um, announcement. Really theatrically done, nice. Mm -hmm. Looked like he came out the door from PT as a little like FU to Konami, like that kind of stuff. But like, did we really need it to go on for 10 minutes? We did like, not. I can, I, everything they said to each other, Kojima and Jordan Peele was 100% worthless. <laughs> yes. Like it is it, two it people nothing. glazing <laughs> each other up in, fr in front of millions. It's like, no one gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. Like no one cares if you've got a famous friend and you've got access to Kojima. That's I'm right. the one of the biggest Kojima fans of all time. Sure. You, I'm wearing a Metal Gear T-shirt. Yeah. That's right. I love like when he speaks. He said nothing interesting there, yeah. and Jordan Peele didn't say anything interesting there. Like have him come out, do a minute or two, whatever, and get him out of here. Well, was I can't believe we haven't even mentioned that Matthew McConaughey was here. Like, oh my god! Like we just there's Matthew so McConaughey. many celebrities yeah. that you literally just forget Matthew yeah. McConaughey came out. Yeah. All right, he all right, was right, good right. though. He, he did was, his best. He was good. All right, all so, right. um, I uh, guess met my friend last night. So randomly, it turns out that one of my best friends from school was in LA. Okay, she's not a gamer at all. Right, hasn't played games since like we played games together when we were kids. Right, uh, she and her boyfriend were in town, and I was messaging her from the event, and she was like, I, "What are you going to? What is this thing?" And I was like. Oh, it's like an awards ceremony and like we're looking at new trailers of games and then oh Matthew McConaughey's here. And she's like, What? <laughs> and then and then I posted Timothy Chalamet in my, uh, my story and she was like, What the fuck is that? Where are you? And I was like, 
I don't know. Come to the bar afterwards. And, no. yeah. But I wanted. I wonder if it has the intended impact of like the normies. Are they paying attention to the game awards because they hear that Matthew McConaughey and Timothy Chalamet are hanging out at this thing and like Hollywood Reporter reports on it and therefore like it gets yeah. picked up. Is that the goal? That is the yeah, intended that's effect. The thing. Yeah. Like, you would be surprised at just how impactful like a, a trade like Hollywood Reporter and Variety Reporter sure. yeah. and your stuff. And if you get the big names, you get there, you get the ads. I mean, like, I guess. It, it's like it's it's part of the ecosystem. It's the unfortunate reality of part yeah. of it of putting a show together yeah. like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, especially as the video game industry kind of the lines between video game industry, Hollywood industry starts to blur even more and more. Like yeah. the, Hollywood has like wrung superheroes dry now, and it oh, seems it's video like games the now. next Turn step games. is video yeah. games. Like and. Definitely. For better or worse, like this <laughs> game show is positioning itself to be a good middle ground or like a bridge between the two worlds. Um, and But it's like leveraging that is like really doing it. When, it, when that comes at a disservice to the people who whose backs this industry is built off, mm. I'm not I'm not up for that, man. Like I, I don't want that smoke. Even if it means like I don't, I'd rather not hear from Kojima if someone else can, if like, you know, Sea of Stars developers get to talk about it. I'll take that L, even though I love Kojima. Like, totally. 100%. Matthew yeah. McConaughey, whatever, dude. He came out and he's like, I'm in the game, man. Was he in the trailer? trailer played and I was like, was he, he was in the game? In, yeah. I don't think he was in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, in the game. He's, he's just okay, literally, okay. they were like, get the interstellar guy for our interstellar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, cool. Probably like a minor side character or whatever. Well, so. on a positive note, cool things at the event, being present for the Alan Wake 2. Oh. Yeah. It was great. I don't know how well it translated over to like watching on stream, but it was oh, incredible. Awesome. That was actually yeah. a real, that was one of the best things I've ever seen at an award show. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, that yeah, and the fact that Sam like got up there himself and was just doing his thing, it was, it was cool. It was, it was fantastic. But it, it was so nice to have both Alans, like you had yeah, Ilka, yeah, yeah, all uh, three Alans, and, <laughs> yeah. and doing the and doing the the like the miming along, and Matthew Peretta. Oh my god, dude, he the can pipes. sing. Yeah, holy oh, man, shit. I was the like, pipes. I was watching yeah. him. I'm like, damn man, you're fucking yeah. talented. He, live singing, yeah, like, obviously, I know. like yeah, in the game is is great, but like live, I was yeah. like. He's crisp as Homeboy's hell. trained. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he is. Definitely. He is. He's yeah. got it. He's got it. But that, you're right. There were, look, and to be fair, there were some some of those great moments where, you know, you're like, yeah, I'm really glad I'm here. And I, you know, I yeah. like being in the crowd and yeah. it's nice to feel it and it's nice to see that stuff happen. Blade um, was hype as hell. Oh, my oh, we'll God. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. we'll yeah, get yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, um, I mean, like, and, and the, I always love the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. The the pipe man. Oh, yeah. the, 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 hell, the hellblade. Man. The hellblade. The hellblade. Uh, like, oh yeah, that yeah. was great. Gorgeous. Th- yeah. the, the musical stuff always makes me emotional. Sure. Like yeah. hearing the music that loud on that scale. Yeah. It's that's the, my favorite part of this show. Final and, Fantasy was incredible. Yeah, and they, uh, oh, if, yeah. You, if you can give him credit for anything, they always nail the music. You're right. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. He I'm reloaded his flute. Like he had a he had a two he, Dark Souls two phase boss fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he got a bigger weapon yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He, was like, hitting, oh, he was hitting Y and pulling out like the, he had the Halo two weapon swap. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's great. I wonder what the other people in the orchestra think about him though. I <laughs> do. They yeah, just be yeah. like, yeah. dude. Fuck you. Uh, so <laughs> you know, like, it's not all about relax, you, man. Yeah. I immediately recorded him for the entire Yeah, that's what I did too. That's what and I did. like posted it and everyone's just like, this man is vibing out. <laughs> and there's bits where he's not playing. And yeah, he's just yeah. like, he's just, like, like they're just grooving. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a highlight. For God sure. bless him. I agree. Yeah. What's his name? What's it? Pedro flute guy. Eustache. <laughs> Eusta- Pedro, Pedro Eustache. Pedro Eustache. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And he makes his own flutes. He he makes. That's he forges he his own flute weird flute instruments. Did yeah. he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Just another quick one when you need <laughs> in a pinch. Like he's got one in his boot. <laughs> yeah. like, it's literally that anchor yeah. man like me was. I'm not prepared. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a flute. All right, so I think it's probably good to move on to the actual awards. Yeah. The winners and losers. Mm. Uh, does anything stand out to you guys right off the bat? I mean, nothing for Spider-Man, huh? Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, but what was that nominated for? Like, action Yuri, game? Yuri was nominated. Yuri was nominated. Uh, for player's sure. Choice as well, I Narrative, think. I think. Player Choice. Narrative, yeah. Yep, yep. Score? Quite a few. Music, maybe? I think music, yeah. But it, for me, it's not remotely. And, and Game of the Year. Yeah, sure, no. For me, it's not remotely surprising for Spider-Man because, like, mm. it's a really solid game, don't get me wrong, mm. but, like, we've played big chunks of it before. Yeah. Uh, and there's so many other new things that we've experienced this yeah. year that we really just, like, so stand out. In any other year, of course, it would have done significantly better. Like, mm. I don't think Mario Wonder got a single yeah. I was just about to say, like, I don't that think is that legitimately, that is a, a remarkable video game. Mm. It got zero awards. Because I just think the way you size up the mm. categories and then the nominees and whatever, 
the deck is just stacked against it in 2023. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of momentum based stuff as well. Like yeah. those, these past few weeks, like the, the Alan Wake 2 and the, um, Baldur's Gate train has yes. been just yeah. on firing, like totally. on all cylinders. Yeah, that's true. Cause I mean, Alan Wake 2 won best a game for Time Magazine. Mm. Did. Uh, and that's, that's like a thing. Tell a Swift. Thing. Person of the something or other. Person does she need? Does that. she need more popping up? <laughs> she needs, and you got to buy all three copies of the thing like, now. All, all three covers. I'm you know? sorry, I'm, I'm gonna get hate for this. But oh, like, don't say anything bad about Taylor, please. We can't. This the we podcast can't couldn't that. sustain it. <laughs> yeah, can't like, rip on the podcast. Right. Yeah, we, I'm a similar age to Taylor, and I'm just like, if I speak like that, and if I start referencing Horcruxes yeah. and Gandalf whispering in my ear, you fucking. I take saw me that. Out. Yeah, I, I was, was like, like I was like Ernest Klein, Ready Player One wrote this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote this. Yeah, I know this like speech that. is written by him. But anyway, but yeah, no, Alan, we're getting uh, like di direction, uh, yes. art, and narrative. Narrative, yes. Yeah. yes. yeah, I was very happy about that because from the direction side, I was really hoping that it would win because it really felt like from a direction perspective, yeah. that there was just, you could feel the fingerprints of those directors on, those on that game. And yeah. obviously, Baldur's Gate is this incredibly... The composition of Baldur's Gate is remarkable. The scale of it, yeah. the design, whatever. And obviously direction is paramount and all of that, of mm. course. But there's just this thing with Alan Wake too. That's just you just feel yeah. the it's... people involved in it in such a direct way, in the way that that is directed. And yeah, I, I was so pleased. It to feels see like that. an art house movie. Yes. And then Baldur's Gate in my mind is like a Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings style yes. thing on the scale where like it's like that's why. It, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> very, yeah, that's, very. That's how it in edition. my mind, like, where you can tell the kind of um, who who's involved in the art house yeah. part of it because there's a small crew and yeah, yeah, but it wasn't. But you know, you feel the the input from everyone. There. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Starfield didn't really Starfield was nominated for like one best, best, trailer. best RPG so funny. the trailer the trailer oh the thing yeah. that came up on screen it was like we wish all games like, Merry a Christmas, very everyone. good like, yeah. award ceremony it's so funny yeah. yes thank you for not nominating us for anything but we wish everybody else wish a happy award time. show we're doing fine over here thank you very much for asking <laughs> it would be a real shame if those awards went missing <laughs> it was such a weird trailer it was I, I don't know why they did that to be honest I guess they just want to meet people away where that like, Starfield exists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like anyone watching the Game Awards doesn't already know what Starfield is. Yeah. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that was very weird. Yeah, but I get like they had Todd in the audience, and I I know that was mostly for the, the Fallout moment. I mean, I guess. Like, yeah, sure. Todd, actually, Todd's like, if I'm coming all this way, yeah, put a trailer. I, on there. I just read actually a headline today about like the um start like the people who did the mod for Skyrim, um, like with the mo co um co-op Skyrim mod. Mm. Oh, yeah. They just announced today, they're like, you know what? Starfield is too shit <gasps> and we are abandoning work on this mod. Wow. Yeah, they're like, they're like, I'm not going to continue working on a game this mediocre. Wow. Yeah. Oh so they're like just God. down tools on that mod and they're just oof, walking oof. off into the sunset. That it's is brutal. brutal. It's brutal. Very, very, very brutal. So, but I mean, obviously we could talk about Starfield forever, yeah. but the fact that it was not represented in this video game, in this ceremony, is like not at all surprising mm. because despite its huge reviews, I think, the discourse in that game just shifted so hard against mm. it later on, yeah. and so many other games that it was just like it got yeah, yeah. so much. Because what do you what do you put at? What do you put it? Is it the best RPG? Absolutely not. It's no. in terms of a Baldur's Gate. But then is it best action game? No. Best fighting game? Narrative. Is fighting I think game. so. <laughs> best, I mean, you're fighting against the right. game. Best family <laughs> so. game. You know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, not surprising. Best ongoing. Ooh, so let's, about let's that. dig yeah. into that. One. that. So yeah. Cyberpunk that one. 2077 won, uh, but it was up against. Other ongoing games like Apex Legends, Final Fantasy 16, Fortnite, and Genshin. Yeah. Uh, so, like, yeah. I, I guess it's like it's inclusion because in 2020, like, was it was it in 2020 where I know for our game of the year, like we held a spot, like we we deliberated, we did the list, and then it was like, okay, we have to see how Cyberpunk plays. And like we'll hold it a spot, I guess, or just like everyone, yeah. you know, we might we might have to revisit yeah, our list. Keep in mind that this is a factor. So yeah. Point. And then I I can't remember if they did that for Game Awards. Oh no, they they wouldn't no, have done because they, they didn't. it was happening. But like, yeah, for twenty twenty one, there was just nothing for Cyberpunk at all. Yeah. And so, I wonder if this is like the the not on the make good, but like it's a category that it was kind of jammed into because it it adds to the redemption story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, obviously. Mm. Everyone, like the no one, like Jeff, for example, didn't put it there. 
it's kind of just the judges all choose what they put yeah, there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So in, in obviously a critical mass of judges decided that this was uh, deserving of the ongoing mm. label. I wonder what the mindset was because is it is it ongoing because <coughs> of the fixes or do you count it as like ongoing because it had an expansion and it was good? Yeah, mm. this is where it's or these. Both. We get yeah. into that conversation about like categories and yeah. we can talk oh, about indie um, game as well with Dave the Diver. Well, not just that. It's the, um, uh, the Sim... The sim category. Oh, with like um, uh, the, ra- the 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 racing sim one with like yeah, people were Forza versus mm. FC twenty four and all this sort of shit. Yeah, 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 Weird, sure. yeah. But I mean, yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm, I'm genuinely happy for CDPR. Like, yeah. it's that game. It's and yeah. seeing Pavel and um, Gabe up there, and it was like you could tell that award really meant a lot for totally. to them. Was it the I, I, uh, I, that's I still the thing. feel weird about the category though. I agree. I, I'm like super happy that they get yeah. a moment to recognize the work that they've done. And it's like, and because I really do believe Cyberpunk is a magnificent game mm-hmm. now. I always believed it was really great. But obviously it was, I liked it it was it fucked obviously at launch, yeah. clearly. Yeah. And it's nice that they get a moment where they get to celebrate that. And I think if there was a category of like best game fixed up post-launch, yeah. <laughs> sure, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Sure. But like a best ongoing game, I think that's a thing where it's like this game says that we are planning to be a game that is there and being constantly updated mm. and we're building a community over time. And we know what those games are, right? Mm. This is not one of those games. This is a standalone thing that you play and you finish. They've, yeah. no, they're not doing any major updates on it now. They're going to add little things probably because they just had an update just this week actually that added yeah. like new motorcycles and whatever, a whole bunch of stuff Metro actually. System. Metro System, yeah. sure. Hanging out with your Sad Keanu. One. Hanging out. Yeah. It's got Sad, Sad Keanu, Keanu in there. That's yeah. right. Yeah. All that shit. So it's, yeah, but this is, but it's not an ongoing game. So as happy as I am to see them get that moment, I also don't think that that's the right category no. for yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, and it kind of, I, I'm sure it doesn't cheapen it for them. It is for them, they can yeah. make it work, but it does kind of be like, if it, it would, it kind of feels like, oh, they just made it work for us. Um, and, and it kind of undermines the spirit of the of that category for all the others that were nominated mm. in there. It's like, we launched in this way and, it was a g- decent, good game. And then we spent time and effort building upon that. Whereas Cyberpunk launched in a bad state yes. for a lot of people. And then the thing that earned its way into <coughs> being in that category is fixing it. Correct. And then had, adding like little bit of content. Correct. Like, just because it says ongoing game, like doesn't having that be like, oh, we, f- we spent ages making this game good. Mm. Uh, in a in a category where others are this is good and we added the content to it to make sure that you continue playing and it remains an interesting game for you yeah. it's like i would never no one would ever describe cyberpunk as a live service game no but that's yeah. effectively what that category is yeah. effectively yeah i agree i yeah. agree I, by the way did you guys see because obviously sean murray came up <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> sean yeah. murray came up and he's like our most ambitious thing ever and at that moment i gasped yeah <laughs> no, no. And I literally, room was un- making some weird un- noises and that's yeah. right under my breath i said please don't say that <laughs> no, no no when he <laughs> said the first true i was like, like don't do that. even <laughs> jeff was even jeff was like oh wow. well, here we go right. yeah, like Look um, cool though. and so he he gets up there and he makes his big promises or whatever else and then he rolls the trailer it looks really cool and then on Twitter, he kind of makes a bit of a joke about the fact that he's like out there promising the world and, you know, like very self-aware kind of tweet or whatever. And um, and then the cyberpunk, did you guys see this? The cyberpunk, oh yeah. So the official cyberpunk Twitter handle then responded to his tweet being like, don't worry, you can fix it later. Like smiley face kind of thing. And it's kind of like, that's weird. Oh, and and, and, and no. like, a lot of people are like, that's cool, funny that's joke. Funny. But at the same time, I'm like, that's not cool. You know what no. I mean? Like, that's not okay for you to joke about that. Uh, look, you're yeah. at the other side of it, sure. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think it's okay for you to joke about that at this point. It's, because... Especially for them. Totally. Exactly. You know what I mean? That, Hello Games. Like, that's it. I mean, and they're, two, they're the two stories. Like, yeah. you, those game, those two games, and obviously Final Fantasy XIV, are like the really yeah. the three games that we talk about when it comes to these redemption arcs. Mm. But I don't think we're at a point with Cyberpunk where you can make that joke on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. It comes that's... down to the, the, the age-old saying, you can just... Not tweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can always you just, can just not. not tweet. Yeah. Just the best not time tweet. to not tweet is right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, the only other thing top of mind for me is Hi-Fi Rush. I like seeing yes. it get some, yeah. get some recognition. Yeah. That's I agree one of my yeah. favorites of the year. Me too. So to see it show up was cool. I also really liked the profile they did for Venba. 
Yes. Which yeah, is really too. nice. Yeah. And like, especially like where they included <laughs> like people of color or from that culture playing it with their like mm -hmm. mum in the background sure. or a parent or, or some family member or friend. I thought that was really sweet. It works better than like a trailer. Yeah. Because like, yeah. I, I knew of it, but after seeing that, I was like, oh, fuck, I got to yeah. play that. It rules, yeah, man. Yeah. It's yeah. like a couple of hours and it's so it's good. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah. It's, I also, it was, who was the name? The um, Japanese... Ikumi, Ikumi Nakamura, Nakamura was right. yeah. It was really nice seeing her yeah. up on stage. It was weird as well because- But it was weird because <coughs> it was like, she I, doesn't have a publisher. She doesn't have a publisher. <laughs> Help, her. Help her. That's right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, did she pay for that slot? Like, how does that work? Is that just Jeff helping her out? Or like, what's the deal with that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like a big deal yeah. to get that kind of platform yeah. and yeah. to be able to do that. Having said that, what she's made looks pretty incredible pretty cool, from yeah. the art design perspective. Yeah, cool character wild. designs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like um, there's like an attack the block looking guy. Like he's got like a backwards hat, <laughs> yeah. like a sword. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. It looks like um, Ghostwire Tokyo, but like fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> like, so that'd be Cool. That'd she be also that. has to be the first person to bring a child to the Game Awards. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, She's like nice. posting videos of her just walking around yeah. like okay. the area with her kid, and the kid's just like, <laughs> that yeah. kid's gonna be a gamer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, totally, totally. No, that's cool. Um, yeah, nothing else. Any other like? I didn't just realize. Surprising? I didn't realize light speed was so big. Light speed. Yeah, uh, yeah. The X rock star Stephen. Um, I forgot his surname. Steven yeah, Rush. they made that one with Why's the uh, robot bursting through the, the last port, sentinel. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, it's going to be an open oh, world. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, game. yeah. yeah. Okay. Because when okay. they showed up, like the clapping was from their corner. And there was a lot of them. Was there. a lot. They yeah, were like, right. we bought everyone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about that project. Yeah, they're a new studio. Uh, okay. It was just like I know what I remember the trailer now, but it just looked like what was it called? Cin cinematic stuff, and I was yeah. like, okay, well that could be anything. Yeah, I don't really yeah. Know anything. yeah. So yeah. I ran into so, a few people afterwards that were from that studio. Okay, and they were like hype as hell to be there. They were like, we're so glad we can talk about it. That's cool. Cool. Was really, it was insane. just Baldur's Gate cleaning up, yeah. and it was like, I wasn't surprised. No. It was like, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah. They're like, we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Lightspeed yeah. LA. Because, yeah, when they were like, we've got <coughs> 200 people, I was like, when the hell did that happen? Right, okay. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, I'm hmm. really paying. I, I just hadn't even heard of them, I don't think, so. I only know because, like, a few people have gone there recently. Like, okay. But... Hmm. Yeah, Baldur's Gate sweep. Yep. Uh, as to be expected. Cool. And yep. totally deserved. I mean, got to be a rough year for Aonuma. I mean, like, you literally somehow managed yeah. to top one of the greatest games ever made. And yeah. you're like, well, that's my work done. I'll wait for my awards later this year. And then August rolls around. He's like, fuck. <laughs> wait, what did, what, which one the D&D &D nerds uh, have done it. <laughs> that's right. What did Zelda win? Uh, uh, it action won. Adventure? No. Uh, adventure. Action Adventure. Yeah. Win okay. Action Adventure. Yeah, Action yeah. Adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because we were in the lobby of the hotel. We were meeting some people. And he walked past. And I was like, they've won something. Yeah, sure. they've like, won something. They were, you don't like bring someone in in, someone at Nintendo was told. Right. I wonder if they do that or not because I've heard that rumor and I just I wonder if they. I feel they, like because it's like kind of risky, right? To tell. I mean, no. I guess not. It's not like Nintendo I, PR are gonna leak. I think Miyazaki's you know. not gonna. Yeah, sure, I think sure. I, th I think they like being in public, but yeah. Yeah. I think they make it clear. Well, they just like do the it will be worth your while. Mm -hmm. kind I also of think thing. Nintendo has a pretty good relationship with the Game Awards. Yeah, exactly. In general, and so yeah. I think that's obviously. I was sitting like six feet from Reggie. Oh, nice. Oh, I was, yeah. I was, too, I was, was too scared cool. to say yeah. to yeah, say hello. No I was way. like, I don't want to bother the man. No. But, you know, yeah. Yeah. Long Island Zone. Is he from Long Island? Is yeah, he from yeah, like, yeah, right. school on Long Island? No way, right, right, I'm right, like, right. I'm taking that one. <laughs> <laughs> we were sat next to uh, the Capcom team. Oh, nice. And uh, when they were, like, they clearly didn't know when the Monster Hunter trailer was going on. Right. Because the poor guy next to me, every time Jeff got on stage, he was like, <laughs> he's recording it getting ready and then he just had he must have had about 10 clips of just sure. 20 seconds when it was clear it wasn't going to be that yeah 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 right 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 any final thoughts just very glad that Baldur's Gate got yeah. what it deserved it was really the nice suit of armor see. was great mm -hmm. yep it was Except beautiful it. as soon as the microphone picked up like the oh, clanking of the arms funny. I was like yes yeah. that's so hilarious yeah because um, we, we gave him the game of the year award before yeah. And he the the limited mobility on that exactly. suit of armor because <laughs> he tried to put on, he put on his sunglasses and he's like it's like a bad suit. Yeah, moving like Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, yeah. uh, I think this is a good time to take a break. Yeah, we got a bunch of other stuff we're gonna do, so we'll see you in a bit. Let's talk about breaking into the games coverage business. A lot of people ask me how to join games media or become a YouTuber, etc. Truth is, there are a lot of paths into this gig. For me personally, I like making videos, so YouTube works. But what if you're all about the written word and want to write for a publication, or maybe even start a publication of your own? Well, if that's the case, then you're going to want to set up your own website, ideally with Squarespace. 
Squarespace lets you create professional looking websites in minutes. They have a whole bunch of really customizable templates you can tweak to your own preference. And in no time at all, you can have space online where you can begin writing and publishing your own work. Maybe that site is kind of like a portfolio that an outlet might look at when you're applying for a gig. Or maybe you just go independent and do your own coverage your own way. If you're going to do that, then you're definitely going to need to worry about things like SEO. Otherwise, your work won't appear in search. Luckily, Squarespace provides helpful SEO tools for just that. You're also going to want to know how people find your website and what people are doing when they get to it. That's why Squarespace has detailed analytics tools allowing you to track all that stuff and more. Since 2003, Squarespace has been helping people turn their dreams into reality. So if there's a passion that you'd like to make a career, then check out Squarespace for free by visiting squarespace.com. And when you're ready to get serious, use offer code SKILLUP at checkout for 10% off your purchase of a domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. What's, oh, what's on your shirt? I've been like staring the it's whole time trying to figure it out. Oh, okay. That's what I thought it was. Shit. Okay, cool. A yeah. show, a, That's cool. a series that I have not seen in like a long time. Oh, okay, right. I was going to say you've not seen oh, no, it, no. but I'm wearing the show. No, I have seen it. Okay. No, my, uh, but my friend Jen texted me and she was like, do you like evangelism? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's happened to one of my friends. Oh fuck. Oh, she, was, fuck. she was watching that Mother of God documentary and she was like, I'm worried about you. <laughs> Um, we do you want to do like a, and we're back. I reckon we just keep going now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, we're back. We're back already. We're back. And, Here we are. Uh, the next thing actually is an interview. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, with Rebecca Ford and Megan Everett of Digital Extremes. Um, so I've known these guys for years. Uh, like met them years ago. Um, when I was playing a lot more Warframe. Uh, there's a funny clip which we're going to show you at some point <gasps> in the episode when we met a, a little while back. Um, but they're really fantastic and, and really genuinely are trailblazers in the world of community management. They yeah. were doing stuff before anybody else when it came to mm. community management, the scale they were operating at and whatever. Um, Megan is now head of community because that was Reb before. And Reb has become the creative director of Warframe. Warframe. That's One so of the very few sick. times where you see someone make the jump from community to like game lead you know that's mm. huge super well deserved um, oh, absolutely God, yeah. absolutely yeah. and they've just they had some big announcements at the game awards mm -hmm. um and they've also they've got um ben ben star mm -hmm. and they've got neil I forget newborn. His last name, newborn as um voice in their upcoming thing that's that they've cool. got they've got lots of rad stuff going plus they've also got uh, soul frame which is yeah. the next thing that that studio yeah. is working on so a lot of cool stuff to talk about and we talk about it right now Yeah. Can I just say we've never had a podcast begin with one a of those clapper? things. One of the, is that what it's called? Uh, there could be a better name, There's but probably I'm probably a more appropriate <laughs> name. No, I don't know. Uh, a take board? <laughs> a clapper? <laughs> well, I'm I like a clapper. It's <laughs> not a take. It probably is a take board. Actually, it might be a take. I'm like laughing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what a ridiculous <laughs> name! <laughs> it's a take board. <laughs> I don't um, know. I think it's pretty good. But hello and welcome. Hi. It's really amazing to see you guys. Um, it's been. How long now? We reckon five years. I think it was, yeah, the last time we were in a room together was five years ago in London? I think it was for the Nintendo Switch preview yes. event. But then we also thought it might have been PAX November. So yes. it was, I think those things happened in the same year? I, I thought Australia was the last time we saw you. It probably was, actually. Yeah, that's right. And if anyone doesn't remember that, we did an interview together. Huh. Did we? And yes, uh, and we can play some of the clip now <laughs> for those who haven't seen it before. Insert Just please clip. enjoy. She, ladies and gentlemen, this is it—the live Vegemite tasting. Welcome to Australia, <laughs> ladies. I'm not so good back. to have you. Yeah, ready? Mm. I can't do it. <laughs> 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 you can't be off camera for reactions. That's what people came for. <laughs> Discord profile is me gagging. I know, actually. I know that. I see you there because you're at the very top of my Discord because you have like a parentheses as yeah. your name. Yeah. And I always see you and it's still there. Every time I see it, I'm like... Nice. I get so many questions. They're like, A, why? And B, what is happening to you? And I'm like, 
It's Vegemite. I and tell that's... everybody that's some of my favorite content that I've ever made. So. It, was a, it was a good moment for it, me. It was. It was the only uh, <laughs> talk I've done that a biohazard was a result. <laughs> like hazardous bio waste was produced. I yep. just love like if you watch it, we're so oblivious to what is actually <laughs> happening. So for him. We are acutely aware because every time she retches again, we spasm with laughter. <laughs> like we know exactly what's going on. I didn't know on. she was actually. Oh really? <laughs> I didn't know. I yeah. thought she was just gagging into a sink. <laughs> She's like, she's, she's fine. She's fine. And we're on the couch trying to just compose ourselves. Oh, I couldn't was, even talk. It was great. Yeah. But, um, but that Thanks was for the good time. Yeah. Glad pleasure. to be back. My core pleasure. memory. Yeah, core. That's right. Yeah. But, um, and before that, I think, yeah, I was in London and it got I got snowed in. And, um, <laughs> and I had to be driven by Drew. Um, Drew. We think it's Drew. We th- we think I'm, it's Drew. I'm, I'm yep. 90% sure it was Drew. Yeah, so uh, another guy, Dean, had to drive me because like the ro- the. I don't know, whatever, like, transport was down. And so he's like, don't worry, man, I'll just drive you to the airport. I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. We love Drew. Drew <laughs> and then he's incredible. like, just get in my pickup truck. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and then, like, as an Australian driving through this blizzard and the road is so iced, and every time we would do turns, it would the car would do these ones, like, whoosh, 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 and I would, like, be holding on for dear life. And he's like, don't worry, man, it's fine. Perhaps you know? that's my revenge for the vomiting. That it must have been, yes. <laughs> yeah, a yes. weather-induced panic attack versus... <laughs> but, um, yeah. beautiful for London. It was, yeah, really, it was, it was fantastic. I loved <laughs> Almost it. Almost died, but it yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, um, but it is really amazing to see you guys after so long. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously you guys have both been on such massive journeys since that time. You are in a very... You too. Well, yes. I'm, but I'm still doing the same thing. But Just you better. guys, well, <laughs> I don't know. Not oh, everyone worse. agrees. <laughs> but um, still doing the same thing. But you guys are now in different roles. Um, you know, there's been some movement at D over the years. Um, and so, Megan, you are now head of community, community. Yeah. community director in live ops. So, took Reb's job. She took my job. <laughs> she took my job. The young ones, they come sure. for us. Definitely, definitely. Yes. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was it like making that jump up to from like, because you were like manager and then now you're lead? Yeah. So, I was at that time, I think senior community manager. And then Reb was community director in live ops. And when it was all kind of happening and Reb, gave me the choice you know? <laughs> sure, opt, opt in yeah. opt in to the email she's marketing like, you don't yeah. have to yeah. but you know you would be my choice mm. and I was like well I'm flattered um and then I took some time to think about it but I was like it's it was a no-brainer for me to do it because I love this game I love this company I love our team I love what Rev has built for the community like she's been community day one literally oh. and then I came in day two <laughs> <laughs> Um, or person to, I guess. And then, so it's been Reb and I in this community team from the get go. Um, so I've seen it grow and I was just like, I, I love this team and I know I can continue what Reb has built. Mm. And that was kind of my, my way of thinking going forward was I didn't want to rock the boat too much. I wasn't going to become community director and be like, all right, sure. we're flipping this <laughs> now that Reb's out, yeah, that yeah. a clean shop. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to go crazy. So I just, I wanted to just kind of maintain the status quo. I wanted to get myself comfortable with the role because yeah. there are a lot of things that I knew Reb did, um, you know, responsibility wise, but never saw it because it just wasn't my role to see the things that <laughs> go on behind sure. the scenes. And then when I was, you know, given the opportunity to look behind the curtain, I was like, damn, <laughs> I was like, how did you ever do any work in an actual work day? Mm. Um, so that's been fun to navigate is trying to, you know, learn to delegate a bit better because, you know, like I said, we have an incredible team and I trust them 100%. So it was, it was a lot of, you know, looking at, not because I wanted to take on all the responsibility. I'm like, yes, this is my role now. I'll do, ev- I'll do anything. I'll do everything. And I was like, no, I need to actually like <laughs> delegate to my team, mm. give them time to shine and, and let them get into it. Cause there was also roles within the community team itself because, you know, we then Danny became senior community manager. Sure. So there were shifts that, you know, kind of incrementally happened to, to support the bigger shift mm-hmm. that happened. So it was a lot of movement mm. <laughs> all in one year. And it was, as we know, kind of the conversations were happening in the early year and we kept it quiet until 10 yeah, o'clock. We kept yeah. it a secret. Right. January, 2022, the last day. It was like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> February 1st, all the changes are happening internal only. No one say anything. Right, interesting. Yeah. And then, yeah, so for, and then TennoCon was uh, late, late July. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, wow, that's a long time yeah. to keep it on the DL. Yeah. And yeah. that was just to, 
smooth things out internally, make sure you felt really comfortable. And is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we, yeah. I think <coughs> I'm very grateful we did it that way because it gave us an opportunity to fail under the pretenses sure. that nothing had changed. So mm -hmm. if things weren't going well, we it could. Steve's fault. It was Steve's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He can take it. So yeah, we're like, yeah, Steve, stop screwing up. But yeah. really it was me. And I was like, oh no. Right. But yeah. So it was a very, I was very pleased that, uh, that generosity and, you know, it felt weird keeping it secret, but sure. it was mm -hmm. much better in the gaming, um, I sphere, I think, to not hand it off without uh, try try before you buy. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I'm really interested because I mean I have a personal view on this mm -hmm. with relation to community management. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I was you know watching you guys back in like the day 2018, 2017, and it was very clear to me back then that you were real, sort of like trailblazers when it came to community management model. No one else was doing what you were doing at your scale at that point in time, right? And I wonder what you think at this point, how is the industry respond, not necessarily responded to that, but clearly there's a lot more push on community side now. Mm -hmm. What are your overall thoughts on how community management has evolved over the last five years? Yeah. I, I feel like we're such an enigma. Like the, the fact that we're still alive 10 years <laughs> later, yeah, we're, we're not, not alive. Dead. Sorry. Not as people, but <laughs> yeah. like, For now. Game, uh, like <laughs> alive as people. Alive we might not make it out of this room. That's right. I don't know. Um, no, I think, I love seeing other games experiment with community or even, you know, adopt maybe stuff that we've done. Like mm. I've had people reach out to me and ask for like tips or just want to like pick our brain on our live streams or our community work, our creator program and stuff like that. And I think it's great. Like I'm all about like sharing the knowledge and supporting each other because it's a vicious world out there mm -hmm. in the video game industry. That's why we're in here. This room, it's, it's safe. Why we're yeah. safe in here. For now. We're yeah. safe in here. So yeah, seeing other uh, game companies, you know, try to be very community forward, I sure. think is a great thing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think you can go wrong with that because even if your game isn't a live service game, mm -hmm. if it's, you know, a, a pay game or whatever it is, having a positive supportive community will never do you wrong. Mm. Like if you put the effort into appreciating your community, listening to your community, you know, being very transparent with them to a certain degree. Sure. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to yeah, see you should it. lie to them for four months about what your no, job no. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to see all how the sausage is made. You yeah, know, sometimes yeah, yeah, you just yeah. want the meal and yeah. not the totally. how it's made. Mm. Totally. Mm. Um, but no, I think it's a great thing and I hope that people appreciate their community and and the support that they can get from that and i think we can only grow positively if we share information with each other there's mm. literally no point in hoarding our knowledge of you know what makes or how we got our community to the place they are over 10 years so i'm i'm an open book really yeah right mm -hmm. and also one thing you guys were telling me is that you have qa embedded in yeah. community now yeah that's wild never heard of that before yeah. what's the deal with that i mean the because we're such a, a live service game and I think we've changed over the years of like, I remember the days where we were updating and hot fixing like every week, mm -hmm. sometimes on a Friday. That was before we had four platforms that needed parity for course, cross play. Of course, yeah. this is yeah. a different time. Yeah. Um, but when you're such a, a fast paced game development wise, update wise, hot fix wise, you know, there's, there's people who look at the live build and how that's performing. Mm -hmm. And then there's, of course, people that are looking ahead to the major updates and the things that are coming. And as a community team, when we're looking at the live build and, you know, things that are broken or things that need fixed, it's such a blessing to have someone that's in the community team that's community minded that can spot those issues that are like, that's a huge community issue. And mm -hmm. it, it might not look like that to, you know, the programmer that's going to fix it, but we know that we can escalate that appropriately and get that fixed. So having that community, we call them the chimeras because they're, they got all that, there's like four of them. Uh, more now, I think. Five, yeah. Yeah, five. There's five yeah. now. So we call them the chimeras. Right. And, um, and, and they've also grown themselves to also do some design decisions as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again, community-minded, but also QA-minded. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a really fun hybrid, and they are a true blessing to the community team. And I don't think <coughs> our, you know, stuff that we've done over the years would have been as polished as they could be without sure. them really yeah. you know tracking those issues pushing those issues letting us know when as we're working on updates they're like hey guys like this, this is a major yeah. fire yeah. Mm. that the community is either going to like or hate and mm. like they kind of give us that perspective because they're so ingrained in the build they can look at you know crafting costs and stuff mm -hmm. like that and they're like 
great, but community-wise, not great. Yeah, like, you basically. guys might not remember, we, we changed where that resource came from three years ago, and we're like, of course we did. Hmm. So, yeah, not mm-hmm. just, so. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, a lot of the changes within the team, we just spoke about then. All yeah, oh, the doors opening. No, it was ignore is him it? because he's oh, checking yeah. to make sure. It's, he said ignore him. <laughs> so and ignore me and I just one, I ruined it. The one, the illusion, <laughs> the one ask was ignore. <laughs> and you have, uh, yes. Um, a lot of the changes within the team, obviously, are um, as a result of some movement at the top. And mm-hmm. the movement at the top was that you left the community team. I did. And then you Just became... Ghosted us. <laughs> I did. I ghosted them. You became the... What's the official title? Creative, Creative director. director. of Warframe. Yeah. So that is crazy. Yes. So, I mean, I... It's funny. The only other time I've ever heard of someone going from community to creative director is Yannick Bonchereau from The Division, yes. another life service <laughs> game know, yes. that I also circle. covered <laughs> quite deeply, you know? Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's a very unusual move to make. Tell us how that happened. Like, what was that like? What was the first moment where that was on the table? Like, how did that happen? It was the weirdest day of my life. Sure. Uh, in truth, uh, so, okay, I'm trying to, like, set the table in a way that speaks to the facts but also my like interpretation of the facts mm-hmm. because I'm I, I, I really did freak out and I didn't know if I wanted to do it so we knew that as Warframe was entering its ninth tenth year well ninth year I guess last year we wanted to start a second game like we thought if if we needed to grow we should make a second game why not right and they were like the, the the guys so you know the, the jeffs and the steves and, um scotts and sheldons were like what are i say plural but there's only one of each of them the sleeps. Right. <laughs> yeah the sleeps they they were really kind of thinking who's going to take warframe like if we all go and do something else who can take warframe and then they kind of really start i think at first and, and i might i don't think i'll get in trouble for this but right. uh and cuz i don't know if we've said it publicly but it was offered to someone else first that turned it down oh okay yeah all so right. um all right. but it, that's someone yeah so i don't know if we've ever said that but that's fine and it's you know that's someone else's story to tell so i won't tell it but sure. then they were like okay well if and then they kind of jokingly said well what if there was an amazing woman that knew everything about warframe <laughs> and has kept us going and, and i i honestly didn't realize they were talking like i thought they were <laughs> Just kind of pulling my leg, and I you're like, "Who is that? Yeah. I want to meet her." Yeah, who is she? And they were like, and then they just kind of, they literally just did a winky emoji on Slack, and I said, "Are you guys serious?" Sure. And I was like, "Okay, I'll think about it." And then I thought about it, and I went, to, I called up my therapist, and I was like, "I don't know if I can do this. This, this is too much pressure." And and you know, at the end of the day, I did it, and yeah. so that was Janu, that was late January 2022, and here I am, almost two years later, exactly, still doing it. So. January of next year, it will have been two years. Wow. Yeah. And is it, in terms of, you know, we were talking about like, you're like, oh shit, when I get there, I'm like, no. fuck, how do I do, how did everyone do this job? You know, mm-hmm. was it like that oh, for you yeah. as well? Like, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've tried to remain a jack of all trades the mm. best I could when I started in community at DE. I really wanted to make sure I understood the craft, the craftspeople, the process and lucky when for me when we first started we were making it up as we went along so Mm. everyone was learning the same stuff at the same time Mm. yes we had experts in their field you know art programming tech sound everyone brought their skill to the table and then i could kind of just see how steve would kind of wave his baton to get everyone you know on a 4-4 tempo or something and i said okay so i would i would see how he operated and Sometimes you just got to so do what you saw be done successfully, but with your own way. And I just, the first time I acknowledged, you know, the, the leads that were coming to me for creative direction and what the plans were and how we're going to hit this update and what its goal is thematically, who this character is, I truly just felt that I'm just the conductor. All I have is a baton. Mm. You are best in class musicians, best in class craftspeople. Can we do this? Mm. We would deliberate and make a plan and go and I just have kept doing that you know rhythm by rhythm step by step trying to sort of scrub away the things I felt were like maybe not working for Mm. us Uh, I'm not as technically brilliant as Steve by any means so you know I'm not going to spend my Sunday making a prototype for Railjack (laughs) but I will spend my Sunday saying like okay this is exactly how this other plan could work and Mm. you know look at every yeah I just I have a very I'm not as technical as him. Sure. And while that is, you know, what you would expect from a game developer, I just have a very different way of 
working with Warframe because I know it so well. Sure. So, yeah. Now, I, I also like I know many of the game designers I speak to aren't necessarily like technical. Yeah, but you get so insecure about that. I think, sure, especially sure. as a woman, I'm like, okay, but I, and I have tried to learn. Like, we have our own proprietary engine, right? Like, the mm. evolution engine is our tech, so I can just go in and just you know, F around in there and sure. and it feels great to learn the tools just kind of, and I, I don't really do a lot in there other than look at the tools that people are using. So I know if I have a realistic ask or mm -hmm. if I can get someone on the tools team to kind of explain to me. Yeah. Like uh, there's this one bug that was driving me crazy in Warframe forever. And, um, yeah. And I was like, how do we fix this specific thing? Mm. Because, and then, you know, we got this, it's, it's going to be fixed probably in the next year. It's like about like collision on a certain corner. It's, it just drives me crazy. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. Okay. And I'm like, I can't fix this. <laughs> but every time in our movement based game, if I clip a piece of geometry at like a slightly parallel angle to it, it stops your momentum, but right. the running animation still plays. And I'm like, how do we, I see, <laughs> and I see. it just drives me nuts. So now they're, yeah. So that's what I bring to the table. Nice. <laughs> Fixing movement <laughs> bugs, it, but not doing it. any of the work sure. and making some say well we have to go like seven years back in this code and i'm like oh sorry i asked to move yeah, on yeah. yeah fair enough <laughs> yeah and so um when you stepped in like mm -hmm. what so how like at a high level how is warframe doing like and when you stepped in mm -hmm. when you looked at it you're like okay well here's what our game is and here's where it needs to go so like where's how's warframe been these last few years that is a great question okay. because it's been all over the place because december 2021 i'll paint the picture the new war releases mm. this is our cinematic quest that many people felt was the you know the end game of warframe in in the marvel cinematic universe people we've been pro <coughs> promoting developing and working towards this story beat for seven years. Yeah, I remember. Yes. Yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah so yeah. the new war comes out and then it's kind of our biggest cinematic update ever and then January hits and like everyone said goodbye. They're like, okay, I'm done with Warframe. Like, really? Thanks. Interesting. Like, and then we were like, okay, uh, are we going to treat this as maintenance mode? Hell no, obviously. Sure. So uh, we started on very shaky legs getting the next story bit going. So we did an update uh, in April of 2022, so four months after uh, the new war ended, trying to keep everything going. It did okay. Like, uh, I'm very proud of it still. I think it's some of the best gameplay content, but, you know, I, I really was, I put too much in it, and it was a little bit uh, shaky on launch, totally my fault. Uh, and then from there, things started getting a little... Um, we were kind of getting in our groove. We have a backlog of checks, I should say, that we had to cash. Uh, the, the prior team had teased the Duviri paradox yeah. in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to ship something. Like, what was our version of the Devere Paradox? So we, we took everything that we had um, and we kind of made it our own, an open world roguelite mode. Because I love roguelites. I think my when you were like Hades two or something no Hades sure. yeah so I and I, we did that it got delayed a bit because it, we again bit off more than we could chew uh, but it came out this year and that was great for us mm. um, and then yeah we just did a huge so now it's kind of a very peculiar how is Warframe doing long answer which is it's actually doing great right now right okay. um, it's uh, we I think we've really gotten into something we're comfortable with mm -hmm. uh, our. You know, our Tenocon this year was all like from scratch, as we say, where we have no checks to cash from the mm -hmm. past team. So everything we showed from mm -hmm. the weird Eldritch and Trotty Labs to the 1999, what mm -hmm. the hell? That was that's all like <laughs> totally. you're on my train now, kids. Yeah, yeah, sure. so, yeah. That's so interesting that you yeah. say that about like the whole, you know, people say, "Oh, new wars, time to step off. I'm done." Because mm -hmm. I feel like obviously Destiny is a comparative. Mm -hmm that's sort of about to go through something similar. Final you shape. Know, the final shape yep. is coming. And I think a lot of people are looking at that and thinking, okay, that's me. I'm done. What would you say to Bungie or the, to the Destiny community in terms of approaching that moment? Uh, it, I th ooh, that moment, yeah, if you call something the final shape, sure. <laughs> yeah, like, I <laughs> mean, tough. we at least could have, like, we called it the new war. Maybe it <laughs> sounded like there was a new war coming. Sure. But um, So how would you think that, like, again, it's not necessarily <laughs> Bungie, but any game, that is just trying to make sure that it sets up its next phase. Like what advice would you give to live service games that are looking to do that and keep players invested in that longer term yeah. arc? I've actually become allergic to roadmaps. So okay. I know, I, I think we were in a roadmap, um, halcyon days many years ago before mm. every game was doing the live service thing. Like where roadmaps were, you we know, we had a whiteboard. We had a whiteboard. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a whiteboard. And I, I am very anti roadmap. I think really? it's, I think it's bad for communities because yeah, I'm a, I'm a certified roadmap hater. Really? Yeah. A, none of us are making roads. <laughs> Do something cooler. Call it a take board. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I, I really don't like roadmaps. I don't think that they are, 
um, healthy in a weird way. It's, really? like you're, it's like you're prescribing a nutritious diet for your community. And I just don't like them. And I, it's difficult to articulate why. I think it it's too... <coughs> like a live service game... Oh, this is going to be a hard one to articulate because it's. I'm very angry about roadmaps <laughs> for, okay. for reasons right. that, that are not coming out at all sure. as words. Sure. Maybe it's because the game awards were last night and I'm not. Sure. But I love live service games, but I also just love games. And I think when you try and prescribe the live service roadmap, mm. you take away some of the fun that you're always like. Everyone knows you're always going to be doing something. Sure. Otherwise, you're not a live service game. Yeah. And I get wanting, and I used to love roadmaps. I've asked for assets of roadmaps, and I just started to really not like them because it becomes transactional. It's like creative transaction where you're you're mm. giving people something to look forward to. Cool, but like even last night, like so, you see Final Fantasy sixteen. They're doing you know, their DLC things. Yeah. Like, that's not a roadmap. That's a DLC announcement. Sure. But a live service game would have done that exact thing as a roadmap. Mm. So what's, the, like... I get you. I get you. I it don't know if I get myself. No, no. Like, I'll get there. It, yeah, yeah, no. And it, it can become your downfall, right? Like, it can. If you don't I've definitely seen that a lot. And yeah. it's like, For sure. And it's by no one's fault. It's just the way development goes. Like, yeah. I, no one's perfect. And if we put out a roadmap of the entire year and something falters... We're, you're yeah. screwed. Yeah. Right? yeah, I like road mapping like one thing at a time that you can already show how to play it. Like, and mm. I think that's a little because because I think roadmaps are live service devs competing with other live service devs to say like, no, we are working on things. Like, yeah. look what's coming, and yeah. it's like it's just it's I just I feel bad for devs when they do it. I felt bad when we did it. Yeah, I get if people love them. I'm not trying to convert anyone. Sure. I just I think the that generally. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As you no, can I, I get you. It yeah. makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. I remember for like dev, when we were doing dev streams yeah. a lot, yeah. <laughs> much more than yeah, we, we used to do like two every a month. other week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we kind of got caught in a we would show things and then those things obviously wouldn't launch for years. Mm -hmm. Show a deluxe skin and they wouldn't yeah. see that deluxe skin yeah. for years. Yeah. And we were we kind of looked at that and was like, okay, we can't do that anymore. Like what we show them needs to ship within the next few months mm -hmm. uh, ahead. And and because then we we really had a backlog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think actually you were talking about transparency earlier. And I think it's important to be transparent. But the, a roadmap isn't transparency to me. No, it's, a roadmap it's yeah. is it's it's, it's clinical mean. and yeah. it's cool. Like yeah, I know. I, I feel real bad now. I need to like do a redemption no, no, arc. On I, it's not no, trans. I, they're I, not transparent. If, if it works, yeah. it works. Yeah. And I like I I think it's really hard as a live yeah. service game. Yeah. Like it, it, that is almost near impossible. Yeah. You want to get them excited. You want to be like, this is your year. This mm. is what you're gonna get in a year. Yeah. You know who I make roadmaps for? The parent company. What, right. Like that's who. I, that's the target audience for a roadmap. <laughs> right. What right, I want right. to do with the players and the people that love Warframe as much as me is talk to them yeah. and like get a, a just give them the next little thing. Give some flavor and yeah. say, of course we're working on the next thing sure. or we're working on what you're playing, but let's go there together. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I think instinctively. I think you I, you definitely see, I think, a lot of hostility to the idea of roadmaps online anyway. Oh, like people oh don't great. Like them, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> you knew this the whole time. You were well, saying no, it. I mean, I think, yeah, <laughs> but I think the way I think we see developers use them and we think, okay, well, developers must like them mm. because they provide some structure to where they work. Mm -hmm. And But I think when you read about like responses to roadmaps on Twitter or Reddit or whatever, mm, yeah. most people kind of roll their eyes. It's like, ah, oh, they've More got like a roadmap. More like roadmap, or it's like, right? whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? More like oh. roll map. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so. like, in course we have, of course we have internal We have an internal roadmap. roadmap. Of, course, of course, of course. You're not yeah, just like, whoa, what are we doing today, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we fix some bugs? Nah, <laughs> and, let's uh, yeah. make something new, you know? Of course we have it down to a T of like, when we hurt, when we hope to have a code lock, when we hope to Sure. Dessert, like we have, yeah. but yeah, actually, I and maybe Marvel did this with their phases of Marvel. That was a roadmap. That was and a roadmap, and it's not going super well. Yeah, so yes. yeah, exactly. But I mean, like for example, Marvel Snap, I know, is another live service game that I play personally. They oh, have yeah. a roadmap, quite high level, and it's like it's neither here nor there because it's not like you become super invested in that mm. thing. You're like, oh, I must have that exact thing that they promised when they promised it. But it's just kind of there. But simultaneously, simultaneously, if it wasn't there, you're like, okay, cool. doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, like yeah. as long as you trust the people that are making the game that you like and you trust that they're doing it well, then it's kind of not really required. I get you. Yeah. I get you. I think, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is entirely possible that, that there's a, you know, a business reason for them of like, oh, sure. inv invest in this company. Look at I, I, I Yeah, no that idea. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like yeah. There, there's reasons. 
I just find them, yeah, I'm not going to talk. I'm done. I am on, <laughs> there is a hiatus of roadmap. <laughs> well, then let's talk, uh, <laughs> let's talk the future. Because, mm. I mean, you guys just had some, like, massive announcements. You're up on stage at the Game Awards. Yes! Yeah! Uh, that was very, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> he's it was, lost for words over right. there. <laughs> uh, fantastic to see you both up there. Mm -hmm. um, and what, so in case anyone missed it, did you want to rehash the announcement now? Like, what all the announcements? Yeah, so yeah. we were there to reveal the release date for our next update whispers in the walls which right. is next which week which is next week on or, december well, 13th yeah i Wait. guess i don't know when this is going live yeah. it'll go live this weekend so ah! yes. okay so december 13th <laughs> yes. uh wednesday uh whispers in the walls is coming out um and we had a really <laughs> asmr here we go <laughs> perfect um, yeah we had a really exciting week because we also got to announce some voice actor news mm. as well yeah. um so neil newbon is going to voice uh, a fish right. a very a cool fish. A talking fish so just to be clear we, anyone doesn't know Neil Newbaum, what did he Asterion, from Bill Reb's Gates boyfriend. <laughs> no, he broke up with Everyone's me. Boyfriend. He Everyone's boyfriend. He broke up with me. Everyone's <laughs> he broke up well, with me. What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> so the voice of Asterion, Neil Newbaum, yeah. uh, is going to voice uh, Fibonacci. He's okay. a fish. He's a fish, in, in right? Whispers in the Walls. Nice. Um, and then Ben Starr, who's the voice of Clive. Uh, and Final Fantasy is going to be voicing Arthur, who, if you watch the TennoCon announcement, it's more of the Warframe 1999 yes. uh, segment where we see the you know hot human Excalibur. <laughs> Get the, the hot subway. in there. Yeah. He's a hunk. What He's a, a why hunk. didn't you say hot fish? I'm a little. <laughs> I think I said Neil's going to be fish. upset. Did you say? Uh, Did you? Sexy fish. I'm going to roll that back. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I think we would have reacted to sexy <laughs> yeah. fish. Sorry. He's yeah. a, a sexy amphibian. Sure. Wait, are fish amphibians? <laughs> oh, Megan. No, I think fish are fish. Fish, fish, fish are friends, not food. <laughs> uh, Car fish amphibians. <laughs> Cut no. that. No, 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 no I'm that's staying in. I'm fine. That's fine. Um, anyway, so it was, it was exciting to to announce them, and like they yeah. came to. We had a little press event, and we got to hang out with them, and they were there, and sure. like talk to press. So they're just some of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, and so that was really fun to announce that, and then yeah, we were up on stage just being girl bosses mm. and announcing that, and just. Again, being really thankful for our community for mm. being there. They ten years this year. Yeah, ten, ten years, wild. a decade, like my entire adult life. That is wild. Frame. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So just coming back to um, Neil and um, Ben, how did this happen? Like, tell us, uh, how, how, how did how did you land these two gentlemen? We would basically two of the best voice actors of the year are now going to be voicing in characters the same in, game. in the same Correct. update. How did too. that happen? How did it happen? Huh? You know, sometimes you just thank the universe for doing its thing, sure. and I just ride. I'm along for the ride. Right. I I will be lucky over good any day, sure. and if things happen for reasons that I can't explain, then I just go with them. It's just I think TennoCon really caught a lot of eyeballs this year, mm. uh, with uh, some of the you know wild things we're doing, and you know people talk and people get connected, and next thing I knew, I was like, oh, oh. Right. <laughs> yes, right. yeah, yeah. I I knew I wanted a talking fish. I had. Uh, <laughs> I actually, I have the, the dream. I have a whiteboard in my office and uh -oh. when we're doing the, when we're doing the launch live stream, I'll show it. I have like talking animals as like yeah. a key thing I wanted to do this year. And I, we, yeah. So, and then when TennoCon happened, Steve kind of really ribbed me on stage that, um, you know, Asterion dumped you. that Asterion dumped me. Sure, so yeah. And I, I, yeah, you know, and someone had reached out, uh, and yeah, then that happened. And then, um, for, for, uh, yeah, and then uh, at a Final Fantasy convention, there's a Warframe uh, creator. Mm -hmm. uh, is Miabyte still a Miabyte, creator? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and Miabyte and Ben connected and, yeah, uh, introduced me. Wow. And then, yeah, right, right again. And I was just finishing, like, casting sheets, and we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do with Arthur. Did we want him to be more of, like, um, more posh or more, like, through a meat grinder? And then I right. was like, oh, we should go meat grinder. Right, and then right, all right. of a sudden, yeah, Ben... Uh, and I connected, and I was like, "Meat grinder, go!" <laughs> yeah, so and he would nail that. I think. Yeah, he's definitely got good meat vibe, meat grinder right. vibes. Yeah, oh, definitely the sure. grindiest of meat vibe right. grinders That's right. That's for right. sure. Yeah, and, and yeah. so mm. and so that update is coming. So, so whispers in the walls. Whispers in the walls is next week. Is next week. And 1999 is next year. So next year, year we just actually announced the Tenocon dates for next year as well. Okay. Yeah. So the Tenocon event next year is July 19th and 20th, and we will be using that event to really go all in on 1999 okay. and show people what that update is, right. and then it'll release next year. Yeah. Well, so. so 1999, just in case anyone doesn't know, is kind of like Warframe. Except instead of like crazy sci-fi shit, you're walking around with like AK-47s. Our instead version. Of being in, like, <laughs> yeah. Sure, your yeah. version of it. And then instead of being in like a spaceship or whatever, you're in a subway or whatever. So it's like 
Back in time, 1999. It's our answer to the... Well, I mean, I won't spoil the quest, but we do explain it in this update. Okay. So okay. we're using this update as sort of chapter one of the next cinematic arc. So, interesting, yeah. Interesting. So this update that comes out next week is, like I had mentioned, like, oh, a lot of people felt the new war was the end of Warframe. This is now the beginning of sure. the future of Warframe. Sure, so sure, that's... Sure. We have a, an hour cinematic quest in this update where you will see 1999 yeah. and you'll see um, Raison... For everything that's going to happen. Okay. So. What was that actually? <laughs> <laughs> She's being fancy, I was going to say raison d'etre. Oh, you that there. Here we go. That's right. I was actually talking about raisins. <laughs> passionate about <laughs> dehydrated food. Um, so uh, obviously Warframe is not the only game that you guys have mm. under your banner. Mm. And I guess I want to talk a little bit so about Soulframe, but also <clears throat> want to talk about some stuff that happened at D recently mm -hmm. because you guys were publishing games for a time. For eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, that, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but that sort of publishing label slash effort has been collapsed mm -hmm. um and obviously people associated with that will let go layoffs yep. mm -hmm. um did i get any of that detail wrong no that's correct okay yeah cool so yeah just wanted to kind of like maybe talk through that for a moment obviously layoffs is a huge thing that's affected a huge as a massive yeah. portion of the industry yeah. i never thought i would be doing an interview <coughs> where de and layoffs were in the same sentence again it's mm. been the worst like i we're sitting here smiling promoting our update but whole okay yeah, yeah. we we're, we're part of it and it sucks and mm. it's awful. So that was just the publishing division. Yes. And because you guys did over the years, there was um, Survive? There was Survive by Survive Sword by? Coast uh, Legends. Yes. Amazing, Amazing Eternal. Amazing Eternal. That was an internal. Internal, but like that kind of kicked off the. Yeah, I was the playing the beta numbers. and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we've had about five or six things. Sure. Yeah. And then most recently, Wayfind. Yes. Right. Which is still going. Like, sure. Airship is still yeah. working on that one. It's right. just our publishing. Um, we're, we've given it um, the publishing and everything over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, sure. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people expected something at the Game Awards on it. You know, we were on stage and we could have said something, but that wasn't our place. And sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. It's, it's awful. It's, everyone's getting pinched real real tight mm. uh, you know from from things i've heard and from people i've talked to it's you know it's where can you you know cut spending how can you tighten the belts and everything yeah. so and and we know why that is sure. there's probably and i'm not an economist so i won't even use the r word other than raisin but yeah it's Fair yeah enough. yeah it's it's hard yeah totally 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 so i mean you guys um are obviously still planning to do other things with the studio though and yeah. we just we mentioned soul frame a moment ago yeah. and so um want to talk about that very briefly mm -hmm. when did the idea for soul frame begin what was the journey for that like how did that where that how'd that go would have been 2020 I, uh, that far but before before new war i think i think like the idea of it yeah i think uh, doing a fantasy game had always been a thing the team has wanted to do mm -hmm. yeah. you know as war it was always a, it was never a matter of if we'll do a fantasy game it was when uh right. so like warframe being the sci-fi um item in the portfolio and then something fantasy mm -hmm. so that that had always been a a piece of um what everyone wanted to do and i think it always starts with concept art and a pitch like yeah. who's gonna draw a character that sort of everything hinges on and then mm -hmm. you know um they just took it away and they yeah. just started going with it, mm -hmm. building this world, getting it going. And then, yeah, we're going to do the exact same Warframe way. We're going to mm -hmm. have a very small private launch test. Yeah, they're having a pre-alpha. Like, this very year. Very soon. Really? Okay. December, yeah. 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 They're, um, Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, I think it'll be great. Yeah, um, yeah they're going to in invite uh, some of the the envoys in mm -hmm. the okay. people who have kind of claimed their envoy title sure. and, and we have you know a little discord set up so it'll be it'll be very small but um yeah we want to grow it just as we did warframe and, and get the the hands-on in there early and just get you know very very blunt feedback like be honest right. tell us how how it makes you feel how it works the combat system um they'll be able to play that and then yeah, hopefully Tentacon next year is mm -hmm. we'll have some yeah, a more, lot more, more to share. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at a high level though, would you say that Soulframe is Warframe with a different setting, or is it no, like a, it's uh, is slower? It, is, it, is it hitting different things? I, I like something clicked in my brain when I heard, I think it was Steve uh, at Tentacon this year when we were talking to press about Soulframe. And he described it as like Disney princess. And I was like, yeah. 
yeah, like yeah. Princess Mononoke, yeah. like oh, those kind okay. of vibes. Yeah, sure. I was like, wow, like something's clicked in my brain. And I was like, that's how I've been trying to describe it. Yeah, uh, have that, have that fantasy. You know, it's not a Disney princess game. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Disney. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that Walter, just kind of that vibe. Like it's it's meant to be. Not that Warframe's dark, but like it's a very Warframe's pretty dark. I think. You got a weird, twisted mind, I created. Yeah, character. I think it's a bit dark. It's a bit, it's a bit dark, sure. Yeah, um, and not to say Soul Frame doesn't have some, you know, dark vibes to it, but it's it's very much the. It's opposite. intentionally not grim, dark fantasy. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's redemption of humans' nature. Yeah. It's very much a love letter to healing, and right. and that is the core theme of it. And it mm-hmm. gameplay wise, it's nothing like Warframe. There's no sure. fantasy bullet jumping. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, the combat does look pretty cool though. That tr- that extended trailer that we saw yeah. looked really great. Yeah, really excited about that. But the art design. Of like really popped off. Oh, Keith, you just Hunt, kind of just yeah. like wow. You just want to be in that world. You want to see more of it, mm-hmm. and it's really yeah. It was really really amazing. Yeah. So um, hell yeah, very excited for that. Um, but yeah, like uh, honestly, really amazing to see you guys personally, but also um, really fantastic to watch the way that the studio has developed, the way that Warframe continues to grow, the way that has this incredible staying power. I mean, a whole bunch of my mates have just gone back to play Warframe oh! recently, and just because like they're Hell just loving yeah. it, and yeah. and yeah, I mean, like I, you just see it. It's just, it just has this very consistent staying power that people want to keep coming back to. Um, and it's very rare that a game can achieve that sort of thing. We will never take it for granted. And for as long as they let us, we will work on it. <laughs> that yeah, is for sure. For sure. Yeah. It is my life's mission to to serve well, Warframe. Well, I know, like, you, you kind of already have the next, like, five to ten years I do. Out. I have my five. That, the, maybe that's why <laughs> right. I hate roadmap that's so right. much. I hate I, roadmap, <laughs> but I have a five to ten year roadmap. <laughs> let me tell you about it. I can't because so. it, 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 I feel like it's a cursed object. It's like sure. this, this, like... Uh, devil's bargain of a roadmap that I have to p- now execute and I don't want to show anyone it because then it will f- fall apart into totally. dust. It's like my Dorian Gray <laughs> for Warframe. That's right. <laughs> Up in the attic. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, I'm sure you guys will crush it. Um, oh, thank you. you know, and it's always fantastic what you, what you guys achieve. And um, yeah, so really lovely to see you. Thank so you so much you. for this taking the, the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been really great. Thanks for not bringing Vegemite. Everybody. No, that's right. Next <laughs> oh, time, there's always next time. We've got, no. we, talk, no. we talk about maybe go to Japan next Let's year. Let's do it, right? And yeah. we'll bring yeah. some games yeah. of Vegemite. Oh, I hate it. Um, but yeah, no, thank you again for your oh, time. Thanks. And um, let's obviously catch up again in the future. Yeah. Cool. Always down for a good chat. Perfect. Good Ralph. Ralph yeah. chat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. See you guys. Cheers. Hey, so this podcast is brought to you by AG1. Uh, We're all traveling right now. We're in a different place. And thankfully, we can bring that green stuff with us. The little travel pouches, the little like travel kit things. Mm -hmm. So I like those. I actually, I've been using AG1 since they sent it to me from like a few months back. Mm. And I actually really like it. It's kind of just part of my routine now. I like the taste. It was one of these things where I saw this green, scary liquid. Mm -hmm. And I've been handed green, scary liquids before (laughs) by my vegan brother. And he's like, drink this. I'm like, hell no. I learned my lesson long ago. But I took a crack with AG1. And it actually tastes pretty good. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nice way to start the day. Because I know that I'm giving myself like good, proper, I don't know, green nutrition Mm -hmm. when I don't eat enough green stuff exactly so like especially with my gamer lifestyle it's nice to know that i've done at least one good thing for my body <laughs> just in one a day though. one though. just one thing just one thing the vitamin replacement like so i used to take a, a multivitamin and that's boring i'd rather drink a cool drink <laughs> like a like a green drink so that's what i've been doing it, it you feel a little better yeah. uh it, it's good for your um digestive yep. uh, like mm-hmm. i don't know how to say that Gut, gut, gut health. Gut health. Health. Gut yes. health. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good for all that, for sure. I've been traveling a lot recently. Like before, obviously, we came to LA. I went to the UK, Amsterdam, and just having AG1 there was like, I feel like I'm just taking care of myself sure. when I was really not taking care of myself <laughs> the rest of the time. In I'll Amsterdam. tell you that for free. <laughs> the, the town famous for like going to bed early and not drinking, of course. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. So it's got you covered. It's it nice. Does. Has a nice little bottle thing they gave us as well. Oh, they have yeah. a nice little canister that like you can keep oh, it in yeah. the fridge. I know, it's mm. super premium. It is. It's yeah. very premium. They're yeah, like little good. kid. If you want to like impress someone, just whip out the AG one. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I promise I'm this healthy all the time, they'll think. And then they will see <laughs> sure. how you really live. And they'll know that's not true. <laughs> so yes, we all use AG one. And uh for here is your chance to start every day this season with a little gift to yourself. You can try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at uh, drinkag1.com slash friends. Uh, That's drinkag1.com slash friends. Check it out. (laughs) 
That was a great interview. Really Thank wish you. I could have been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really I wish you could have been there too, Jake. I'm sorry. I was like, guys, I really yeah. wanted to talk to them and learn about Warframe. It was it was a but, fun chat. It yeah. was nice. It was yeah. I hadn't caught up with those guys in literally years, and uh, it was really fantastic to see them. And yeah. um, yeah, they're yeah, just what they do and the way they do it and how that game has continued to go from strength to strength with this kind of like resolute, just this kind of steadfastness I should say yep. that I think is really hard to achieve in the live service space you know it just keeps doing its yeah. thing and it caters to its community and um yeah but and they're they not stick like around yeah they do definitely mm. definitely and I think as well like there's momentum building up behind it like I was saying to them recently just a whole bunch of my mates just went back and started playing Warframe or they just dip back into it regularly from time to time so I mean it just has this yeah staying power that mm. I think is really hard to nail so mm. yeah I think yeah. it's the closest game to come to a modern like World of Warcraft Maybe not on the same success scale, but in terms of like its longevity is in well, is yeah, really like ten impressive. years, yeah, ten years. Wild. That's yeah. it. And then, yeah, yeah absolutely. And then we, and one thing we talked about briefly was like, um, you know, Destiny's about to go through this massive challenge of like, Oof. you know, the mm. final shape, and a lot of people are planning on stepping off, and they face that. You know, Reverend Mingham was telling me like they face that same challenge themselves when they shipped a big content update years ago, the new war, and they needed to figure out ways to keep people coming back, mm. and they did it. You know, like they've they've mm. they've like yeah, new ideas are, are are bubbling away, and people are excited for the game. So it is possible to keep a game like that going, mm. just really really hard, <laughs> really hard. Yeah. So, well, yeah. let's jump back to the game awards. Uh, with the announcements, mm. this is the best part. This is all the fun stuff. <laughs> uh. I want to hear from. Uh, let's. Who are we gonna go to let's first? Just rip the bandaid off. Lucy, and talk about it. Let's go. Yeah. Blade. Yeah, Blade. Yeah. Blade game. Blade <laughs> game. <laughs> that was the biggest surprise for me. Yeah. Because there's there was obviously this Xbox leak, and the Xbox leak says they're working on Dishonored Three, right? It was like yeah. really clearly. Oh, and it's like well, obviously oh. Arcade Leon are working on on Dishonored Three, therefore it is. And when they showed that, I was totally blown away. I had no idea. Mm. Were there any leaks publicly it's before been, this? It's been whispered It's been about. knocking around. But like what? Only in industry circles? Yeah, I haven't heard but of it. But yeah, I haven't heard anything yeah, online. No, no, it, yeah. I don't think it reached a critical mass where it became like a publicly well-known thing. That, sure. Like, it was one of those ones where some people knew about it and then a kind of very quiet leak happened. Right. And it was like, okay, if you knew, if you had the pre-existing knowledge, you'd be sure. like, oh, okay, that's happening. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Totally blown away by that. Totally the art style I'm looks like, cool because it's very much still their art style. Like um, the, definitely. the barber was like a chunky man yeah, yeah, with like yeah. hands. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. It was like cool. Um, <laughs> chunky yeah. man with hands. You like you know like <laughs> hands. Yeah. Like Dishonor guys, they're like you like oh, the guards. Yeah, they're just yeah, like yeah, you can tell. Got, like, a they thing. look like they've been sculpted yeah. out of clay yes. and then like given detail. Also, just a very cool blade character design from yes. like what we yes. got to see of him. Well, so the thing is as well. So, so Sebastian Miton, who I think he's creative director on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, he's like art director on Dishonored and everything. He comes from a fashion background. No yes. way. So can you imagine? Uh, interesting. The fashion in Blade. Yeah. Yeah. That's why everyone in, in the Dishonored game looks like insane drip. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. Emily's golden thing. It's like super cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that that game is definitely like my game <laughs> of the show. I'm like super super excited about it. Um, it's I, it, like it's doing a lot. Sorry, what were you no, saying? please. I was gonna say, it's doing a lot of like things that I want from a blade. Where, for example, you don't get a like a full on shot of blade ever. Like he's always like slightly obscured. He's in the darkness, and that's a big issue with like most blade kind of depictions. Um, especially the movies, like overexposed. He's a day walker. He can walk around in the sun, et cetera, et cetera. But like it robs him of his kind of like mystique and mm -hmm. almost this like the the way that he's this like vampire. It's going to sound real weird. A uh, vampire predator, if sure. you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like and that and they like look like it looks like they're re reinstating that. But the other thing is like they also make sure that they characterize him as someone who is kind of fighting for people and community and isn't like um kind of you know this wanton destruction and they do it in a really cool way and it's he pays for his haircut on the <laughs> way out so sure. like in, in any other game like or any other yeah. hero they just like blast out of there but yeah. like he actually pays he uses the 20 euro which means it's contemporary um and it's european and and the other is like the depiction of paris mm. i really liked mm. because paris is like a very multicultural <clears throat> um uh kind of like space and the building that they zoom in on the barber shop it's got like some text from uh, Arabic text from I believe it's from the Quran, and they've also got like um, you know crucifixes and stuff mm. like that, and it's like really cool. Like this Paris is going to be a melting pot of yeah. cultures, and it's like oh they they're hitting 
the arcane things. Yes. If you know the arcane things, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, they're making a Karnaka. It's a real place this time, though. Mm. And the other big thing is obviously it's third person. Third yeah, person. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I don't know. Yeah, because Blade is usually what is he set in New York? Usually, like, where's he usually operating? He's he is usually New York. But yeah, he's. Uh, it depends on like. It, not New York, but like a metropolitan city. He runs in different circles. Like, is he is he one of the Midnight Suns currently? Is sure. he an Avenger? Where sure, yeah, is sure, sure. Not locked yeah. in. Yeah. The, the problem with Blade often is like he's, to make him work, the, most times they elevate him to like a level of like an Iron Man when he shouldn't right. really be that way. Right, right. He should be like the Daredevil style, like friendly neighborhood yeah, like character. Boots on the ground. Boots type, on yeah. the ground. And those are the best stories. And yeah. it looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah. And I, yeah, all that stuff that you said is so interesting because like obviously we're so saturated with superhero stuff like mm-hmm. i'm we're all pretty done with it most of the time yeah. like even i definitely felt that with spidey this time around i was like yeah. i like this of course but it's more spidey mm-hmm. i'm ready for some different takes on spidey universe and if you were to say to me like spidey in paris i'd be like all right yeah. let's web swing on the eiffel tower you know what i mean yeah, at least yeah. it's different i love yeah. that song yeah. spidey's in paris <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm fed up of wholesome white people can rap it <laughs> yeah totally like, and I, think, I think with spider-man in particular it can be wholesome to the point of kind of saccharine. Sure, yeah. And that's why Batman is my favorite superhero. Because yeah, my boy is up. mentally Objectively ill. Objectively the best Objectively superhero. Objectively the best superhero because he's messed up. Well, I've got a game for you. Suicide Squad's just around the corner. You know what? I didn't hate that trailer. Well, there you and, go. And, you know, rumblings from the alpha is that it's good. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Fair I enough. do feel kind of like reinvigorated about the superhero stuff because like all the projects are exciting. Yeah. Like Blades, cool. Wolverine. Right choice, Arcane Leo. Yeah, sure. Wolverine, like... They're, I love Guardian. I'm wearing the Guardians of the Galaxy game shoes. Like right. I just, I, I that love is a it. fantastic game. And I, I get more excited now of <coughs> announcements for not like a movie in the MCU. It's games, and it's. I feel like Marvel has been kind of making really good decisions. They have. So. Yeah. I mean, Midnight Suns was a great game. Yeah, yeah Midnight Suns got done. Did not get its uh, flowers. But I mean, actually, it's kind of weird. Like we were saying earlier, that now all movies and TV shows are borrowing from games, and then yeah. in, the, in the superhero space, that is kind of yeah. reversed because no one gives a shit about Marvel movies at this point. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Loki, yeah. Loki season two. Let me tell you guys I, about I, I know, I actually have been meaning Holy to see that. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's well, cool. Yeah, I... Yeah. I know. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I can't it's, even pretend. Yeah, that's it, yeah. But but I think all the stuff that you listed, that makes me super interested yeah. in yeah. that. Because if you were to say to me, Blade, I'm like, yeah, cool. But all that shit, Arcane? like, yeah. different place, cult, like, melting pot of cultures, that thing i'm like yeah i'm really can't, like i want to see what yeah, that is you know? I, i'm really interested to see i don't think they're gonna do the most obvious thing where it's like let's take the existing dishonored mechanics that we know all the arcane mechanics mm-hmm. and just apply them to blade because third person <coughs> is tricky to do that yeah i just really i'm really excited to see how mechanically and design wise they change it up i think like death loop was a really interesting kind of self-reflection game for them where they like go back and pick apart who they are and um and lay that out there and it almost feels like in a kind of poetic sense that was them going now let's figure out what we can do beyond this Mm. and this could be the game where they're like set out a new kind of identity for arcane in in what it does and Mm. maybe it has some of those immersive same elements but they try they figure out a way to make it work in an action environment or for Mm. a character like blade so that's exciting i think like Mm. and we're we're extremely arcane pilled so like i'm excited to see just what they do totally we'll probably get the game before the movie at this point yeah, yeah the movie's never coming yeah. man it's yeah. too cursed yeah, no. yeah. it's never coming sad yeah. uh for me something i really liked was big walk that's the game oh, from the yeah. untitled goose game cool. yeah. Yeah. At the sound, at the yeah. beginning. i love a game where i'm just like <laughs> like the whole time <laughs> <laughs> like that's yeah. it like yeah. i don't really know what you're doing it's like a like cooperative one, experience was the kenneth body one they renounced recently the oh the walking, oh, the walking oh, one yeah. yeah that's what yeah. i thought that was yeah, yeah. dirty yeah. Like, dirty walking man like What's gross man. i mean like it's called something like diaper man walks or something. Yeah. no well, not quite but like quap- baby Jay-Z. steps or something was it baby yeah. i think that's baby that's steps right. yeah yeah baby steps uh, no, you're right. I agree, and it did look cool. And I don't hey, know, that's this... far off, though. That's 2025. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like the little touch that they used to kind of make sure that the overall feeling was joy, and it's the characters constantly bounce up and down <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah. So yeah. they stand like, like this, and then Katamari like... kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, that's a good vibe. Yeah, it <laughs> looked cool. Definitely. I was actually very surprised to see Monster Hunter mm-hmm. revealed. No, we knew Monster Hunter was coming as a reveal. Well, because Capcom were like, totally. we got a big. Game. But I yeah. thought they said 2024 for that big game. Game. So when Monster Hunter was 25, I was like, oh, okay. yeah, I think that was the big surprise because yeah. everyone has been betting on like Q124 for Monster mm-hmm. Hunter. Like that was the word for ages. Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, cool, let's go. 
but now it's 2025. That's a long way off. And and World was a while ago now, mm. you know? So yeah. clearly they've been putting a lot into it. I like the look of it. It does look like yeah. you can carry two weapons, yeah. which is massive for that franchise yeah. and can just lead to some crazy ass shit. So I'm very keen for that. Mm. But I am low-key bummed that it's 2025. Last nice to have been sooner. I wonder if they're like thinking about what kind of game that is. It's not necessarily the game, but I, I wonder if it's a case of like, let's make sure that we create some distance. Obviously, it's also they need to make the game, but create some distance with Dragon's Dogma because obviously oh, that yeah. that's their big game for next year, early next year, mm. I believe that is, right? Um, that's yeah. Yeah. March. Yeah, yeah March. I wonder, that's six I mean, or something? Yeah. I'm, I really enjoy the original Dragon's Dogma. Is Dragon's Dogma 2 going to really permeate the public consciousness as much as they are betting on it? Is it for the Dragon's Dogma yeah. perverts? And yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> I mean, know it could be. Like... Yeah. I, I've never played the first one, so I, I couldn't it's say. Good. It's good. Cool. Yeah, it's everyone fun. says it's fantastic. Yeah. So I feel I'm like, like also they're counting on kind of goodwill and momentum from the games that they have made beyond. Totally. The, like agree. Capcom, I think, has yeah. turned it around in a big, big way. Totally agree. And like they have definitely have some momentum with their remakes and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. So. Also, but it's also like it's too soon for nine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And because, yeah, that would usually be like a Game Awards yeah. thing or a TG uh, or a E3 thing. When we saw like <laughs> when he said 65 million years in the making for an announcement. Oh, I was, was like, <laughs> please, please, please be done a crisis. Please be done a crisis. And then they show, and then they showed this down this Jurassic. What do you think it's a Jurassic Park trailer, Jay? I was offended. <laughs> <laughs> Why? They, they I think it John looked, Hammond's I think voice. it looks shit. To be honest Dude. with you, I really do think it looks shit. I mean, I, I don't even know what it is. I don't know like, what it is. I don't think it was the best. Like, I think it was one of those trailers that's just trying to tug on the old nostalgia strings. But that was a thing, like, and it's like I get that, but you know, if you go back and watch Alien Isol Alien Isolation, sure, like. You can invoke alien, but also get an idea of what you're going to be doing in the game. Yeah, yeah, but this just seemed like it was playing all the hits from the movie. And I was like, well, if all you can really show is, hey, yeah. remember the thing from the movie? Oh, dude, remember that she, thing she, from the movie? As soon as she went in the kitchen, I was like, Don't I was do like, it. you've already seen this scene. Like, what yeah. else have you got? She at that tripped point, over the spoon. I was yeah. like, this, really? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly where you're, I was at. You're going to be all turned around on it when they reveal it's like one of those dead by daylight. <laughs> and you can play yeah, as yeah. a raptor. <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh, what was the Dead by Daylight? Uh, the, the casting That's, of Frank Stone? Yeah, yeah. From, super, with, uh, super, with super Massive? massive. Super massive. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Very That's cool. Like, atmospheric, like, Good reveal. I, hope it's I bet De up. Dead by Daylight fans are probably like, this, "That's the guy." I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 nothing yeah. in there. Yeah. I was like, "Finally, I Frank uh, Castle, like, Castle, not Frank yeah. Castle, Frank, Frank Castle, Stone, Frank, Frank Yeager's here." <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, the other big standout was, and it's interesting because there are a lot of remakes, re-releases, sequels. They are often considered like the safer bet, and Sega oh. kind of did that in this crazy big <coughs> batch announcement of a new Shinobi. A new Golden Axe, Golden Axe, a new Crazy Taxi, a new Jet Set. Uh, I'm I'm definitely missing one. Uh, is this Virtual uh, Fire on there? Streets no, of Rage. No, no. Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage. Of Rage. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was a really cool trailer. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, like, it really... it was. It's weird because we were talking about Jet Set Radio and Crazy Taxi well, like on, on earlier like, that day. Yeah, just yeah. completely unrelated. You talk yeah. about it, but like, uh, the, the day before our friend Ludwig came to Giant Bomb yeah. Nights and he was randomly wearing a Jet Set yeah, Radio right. shirt. We were like... It's pretty sick. Um, but no, I mean, in terms of, you know, C contrasting it with the Jurassic Park trailer, which is pulling on nostalgia and then yeah. not doing anything with it. Yes. The Sega trailer. This was like, we're doing it. We're doing But also, like we're it going did for do it. the fake gamers acting. Like, did you yeah. see the game? I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. But, yeah. you know, I've seen, we've seen much worse at Ubisoft. When it did the eye, and then that it was nice. In, I was like, yeah, oh, that's yeah, I liked it when the Sega went on yeah. for like, like, Unsettlingly long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it crashed? <laughs> it was. It was a nice touch. I like. And I mean, look, I'm still cautious about all that. So I don't know. Sega, they're a bit hit and miss in general. And I like. I also Crazy saw that Taxi could be like a mobile game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's dude. exactly. Yeah, oh, that's no, exactly. Like yeah, yeah. Golden Axe as well. Sorry, Lucy, go. No, I was gonna say like with Persona, like the re-releasing the old hits, and I know that's you know obviously the Persona team, whatever. But like, I really wonder if how P3 is gonna be like reload. Sure. Because if they're putting the care in, I view Atlas so different to Sega though. Yeah. I really but just view them as like, very... like FromSoft is not Bandai. FromSoft yeah. is FromSoft. You yeah, know? yeah. yeah. It's same the same with like thing. RGG and Atlas. Like yeah. they're the same. Yeah, but totally. Like, yeah. It feels like they operate on a different like yeah. quality level. Core C Sega is like 
Sonic Frontiers. Oh, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like that's, that's how point. I see Sukor. <laughs> I just yeah. pissed off a lot of people, I'm sure. But like that's how I see it. And so I'm cautious. I also saw that Golden Axe footage and I'm like, I don't know about that. Yeah. I was like, that that was the only the other ones look sick. Yeah. But the Golden Axe one, I was like, yeah. Same with the Streets of Rage. Where I looked at it and I was like, is that the Streets of Rage I want? Sure, mm. sure, 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 sure. Because they no, they did Streets of Rage. Yeah, recently. They, had like, they were really yeah. good games. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Look, I'm keen for them to go in that direction. It's cool yeah. that Sega's doing this stuff. I think it makes a lot of sense because we do have very deep connections to that era. Like mm. we all played that shit back yeah. then. They were on top at that point, you know? Yeah. They were just they were ascendant. And so it's for them to reach back into that is is really cool. I think. I'm I'm just so happy Crazy Taxi is coming back. Yeah. I really yeah. hope it is what it you know, it is a traditional kind of like game where it's because that idea is so well done and like it's so kind of versatile and fertile for like more games to to come out for it. So I hope it's I there's hope it's there's so one that released again. a little while like last year on Steam. Yeah, yeah. The, the floating oh, column. Yeah, yeah, there was that yeah. one. Um, and that's what I that's why I wonder though. I'm like, because if you release that game today, I don't think it works. It doesn't. It doesn't. Play and so very it's like, well. what else do you do with that? And then that's where I start to worry. I'm like, what else do you do with that? Like, what else yeah. is Sega going to do with that? You I, know I, what I mean, gotcha's even. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, you have to pay for taxi service. So yeah. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> the the, uh, the kind of like scope for like micro monetizing totally. like taxi rides is like yeah. worrying. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if it got its own announcement. Like you see, you see like a trailer. It's like the tires are spinning and yeah. it cuts to black. Offspring. And then you see more and then oh, yeah. it cuts to black again. And it's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it just that would have been game. so sick. Man. Yeah. Ah, Everyone wild. would have gone wild. I, I, I've <laughs> always had this idea in my head for a narrative around the crazy taxi games where it's like old taxi versus Uber like style. Oh, yeah. cool. And that's why he's driving like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah. be Uber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I really like the um, from the Dead Cells team. Oh, yeah. 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 Wind blown? Wind blown. Yeah. yeah. Wind blown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I only saw part of that trailer because I was actually walking in while that was happening because yeah. the line to get into the thing was so long this yeah. year by the way well, yeah because usually it's not Just it's never sold out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, so, and there was the line were around the street this yeah. time yeah. and so I was super late in and I saw that trailer rolling and I'm like damn what the fuck is this and then I found out later I'm like oh it's the dead cells people no yeah. wonder it looks that good yeah. you know yeah good so. art critters with murder like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like a it also like looks bullet. cop yeah well, I don't know I it saw seemed multiple like there were multiple people at the same time yeah 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 what was the um <laughs> uh, the Private Division Moon Studios one. Oh yeah, the Moon Studios. Yes. It's got a um, something about the Wicked. Yeah, oh, no, no rest, rest for, for the, the Wicked. wicked. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the Ori people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Looks that looks cool. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think they awesome. really nailed that trailer. Looked yeah. like the art style was out yeah. of control. Yeah. It was yeah. super good. So. The, the other game, I the opening, the game around like the uh, the hearing impaired game, like the music oh, game. Oh, um, the accessible yeah. uh, music game. Yeah, I that looks really cool. Was, like, that, was that the start of the ser- like? Was that? It was like very, very, very early. early I think, yeah, it was in. in no, it wasn't the main stage. Is it the end of the pre-show? No, it, it was, might have been the end of pre-show. It wasn't, okay. No, because Maybe, Stu's yeah. shaking his head he wasn't. So I think, because I didn't see that, so that yeah. might have been a pre-show. Yeah, 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 pre-show. yeah. So what is it exactly? Um, so it's like this music game, but... I, the character I, I, was wearing yeah. hearing Apologies if I use the wrong sure. phrasing, like, uh, despite having someone in my family who is deaf. Uh, I don't know the latest kind of like... But it's, it's a character that seems to be deaf, um, and the whole conceit is around her discovering music i think okay. and like almost like alice in wonderlanding into a different yeah, world wow. where music music is a little more alive and stuff like that and like a linear kind of like third person yeah platforming yeah. adventure and the music was very like like a big disney movie like musical. yeah exactly like, yeah Whoa. it had a, like a frozen style like yeah. element to it where yeah. it's like oh it's Girl singing really like uh, yeah. excitedly and yeah it looks it looks really cool. I recommend going back to watch that trailer because I remember watching it and feeling like this is a really cool concept and it looks mm. like really interesting, yeah. especially like given that it's a music game around a deaf mm. character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool, sure, yeah, right. What do you guys think of the Kojima thing? We talked about it being long. So it didn't say much. The trailer itself, yeah. uh, being in the auditorium, I guess with the loudspeakers, like yeah. I thought it was genuinely unsettling. Sure. It was a it was cool very little tease. It, Cool it, little tease. It also gave me like, this is we've got we've recorded some like face capture yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. and now yeah. we're gonna put it up on the screen yes. vibes, like which we is just like, started. Yeah, exactly. yeah. but I remember but, hearing that like Sophia Lillis and Hunter Schaefer were yeah. in talks with Kojima to do something, and I was like. Sophia Lillis was the best part about it, it for yeah. me. Like she was so good in it, and then she kind of did, I think, did the D and D movie, but never anything that really she could Popped show her chops. Yeah. And then in that, I was like, she's like sixteen or something too, and yeah. I was like, that's, you're really good. I'm yeah. really interested wow. to see what they do because yeah. and Hunter Schaefer as well. 
Yeah, I mean, I really like because everyone's like, oh, it's just motion cap, like face cam, whatever. And I'm like, it is. But I actually just found it very powerful to watch. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. I think that's what Kojima understood when he saw that. He's like, well, just play this and it's going to capture people's attention. I was like, I don't yeah. like this. this yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing because he also said, like, didn't he say it's like the next stage in entertainment? He said something. Yeah, he, he sure yeah, married yeah. himself. Listen, yeah, definitely. <laughs> sure he's, married big he's time. He's transferred us before. Yeah. yeah. And he'll probably do it again. Transfer yeah. me, daddy. Yeah. Let's I'm, go. I'm obviously on board for I, But he did say, like, this is going to be a yeah. new way to experience it. It's a new medium. A new I medium. Think. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. going to be interesting to see. So he's working with Jordan Peele, but he also said that he's working with a team of a bunch of other people. So, so I said I mean, that they were like Flanagan, the Avengers. for sure. I think it's an anthology series. Yeah. Yeah. So Del Flanagan, Toro. Del Toro. Del Toro. Um, I actually know one of them. Uh, I won't say, but I'll tell you after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. yeah, it, yeah, yeah it definitely yeah. makes sense. Text the group. Text the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it feels like it's a really interesting approach for him. It also feels like it's something that could set him up to almost like have a ongoing project yes yeah. in a way that is really clever because it allows like a prestige moment for xbox as well because yes. this is the xbox game right yeah that's so like wild. every now and then like they could be like this is kojima and wes craven is here <laughs> you think stuff. xbox pitched him like do you want to just Hang with your homies. Yeah. Make, yeah. Stuff, make stuff with yeah. your boys. I think yeah, he yeah, was, they were like, what do you want to make? And he was like, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, actually. It's so true. Starfield aside, but I think Xbox had, had a, a great show, great yeah. show with the, having, being attached to the Kojima thing, obviously, but also the um, the Hellblade stuff. Yes. Still no bloody release date on that. Yeah. No, that's true. No. It's got to be, they did say 2025. And you've got to guess it's like, so excuse me, sorry, yeah. so 2024. And you've got to guess it's like sooner rather than later because it's like been in the oven a long time now. They've shown a lot of stuff. I feel like it's got to be, but like. But I feel like if it was sooner rather than later, they'd be like, wish list now. Yeah, I guess right. Yeah, yeah. true. Just yeah, true. they did I, have the uh, on Game Pass um, day yeah. one kind of splash screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I am yeah. so excited for that. I love the first one. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's like watching that trailer, I was like, there's no other game that has this type of aesthetic. Like, it's like yeah. almost like it's a Robert beautiful. Eggers, like yeah. dirty, grimy, like real thing. Yeah. The, 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 the music as well. Cool. Yeah. The thing that is easy to forget about is like Ninja, Team Ninja, no, Ninja Theory. Mm -hmm. I was getting mixed up. Every game they've made has been on a shoestring budget where they've like DIY'd all this stuff yeah. together. And like even Hellblade is remembered as being like really excellent, but like you go back to it and you can see, you can see where they had, you to... can see how they like made that happen for themselves just, you know, through gusto. Mm. This is the first game that they've got like engine on it. They've got like, as in like they got heat behind the money and yeah. power and that kind totally. of thing. They got weird ghoul money. Yeah. They exactly. built that weird ghoul man. Yeah. They can yeah. make freaks yeah. is where they're at <laughs> Freak now. money. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. I, I misspoke. Uh, yeah. So like, that's one of the most interesting parts of it. It's also like the, the whole like Hellblade. It's, it's called like Senua's Sacrifice. Senua's Sacrifice Saga. Hellblade yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Senua's Sacrifice. But is this like an, isn't it like a saga or something? Senua's like Saga. Senua's Saga. Yeah. So it's like, there's more stories to be told in, yeah. in this sense. Like, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see that the stuff. The key art rips, dude. Yeah, like, cool. the hands on the face. Yeah, yeah it's that great. Yeah, it's a lot. Ooh. Any and Elden Ring in there, good. pal? Yeah. <laughs> Any Elden Ring in there? Yeah. The, the um, hands. I, I saw on Reddit about um, Baldur's Gate, mm. and it turns out, because Baldur's Gate now, by the way, it's out on Xbox, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I read on Reddit that they were meant to announce yeah. on stage <laughs> they when they got an award that it was out, and they forgot. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as she's like, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. And then, and so now and people two minutes after the show were like, hey, it's there in the shop. I could play it now. Sick, you know? Yeah. It leaked. Um, no, no, no they just, yeah. They just it. But that's kind of what everyone was expecting. That it, but yeah. everyone was hoping for a shadow drop on Game Pass. And I'm like, nah, man, they're going to sell no. it to you. They're going to yeah. sell yeah. it. You're paying for that money. Totally, totally. Um, totally. You're paying for that game. God of War. Yeah. Oh, that was a surprise, I think. And like, illogically, it makes sense. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, it's the right time. You, you've you always done some DLC in the past. Mm -hmm. You do a little bit more. If it, it seems to me like not much, though. It seems to me like an arena fighting yeah. expansion thing. Maybe like a little like roguelike. Rogue -like yeah. yeah. And when he's like, yeah. oh, that's part of the process. Let's yeah. do it again. Let's do it again, I brother. Like, I got like, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm not expecting anything massive for that. But it's like, yeah. if there's an excuse to play it and it's good, then sure, you know what I mean? But Yeah, I mean, like, it's not going to be... I mean, like, after seeing the new Hitman freelancer oh. mode where, like, taking pieces of games and yeah. reconstituting them as something to something else, <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to be on that level of quality, but I'm more open to the idea of, like, coming at the same games that we know from new perspectives. And also, combat is one of the most 
satisfying parts of that game. So given people who love that combat, a way to, you know, get in there constantly without having to, you know, go through the narrative each time and have like these repeated sequences. Yeah. I think that's smart on their part. Mm. It's not it's not exactly gonna tie them over to a new God of War, but it's like just a nice way to yeah. get and it's and it's free. So yeah. it's yeah. like totally. Yeah. And it's though, like out this weekend. Yeah, I was going to say, I will say, being sat next to you was very funny when everything was getting announced because Tam handles all our reviews and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. every time was like, it was, was like, like and it's no. out today, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's out on no. the 12th. The New finals, story content yeah. in Alan Wayne. Finals, like, no. finals is out. Yeah, oh, that's finals wild. Finals is out too. And at, Tam, at, at one point, I can't remember, I think it was the, the Final Fantasy one, you just went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Genuinely, I'm like, at a certain point, like I have to look at my writers and be like, yeah. enough is enough. I'm not going to cover this because like people are, they want to stop and they need to stop and we have to give people and I'm not I I, w- I tweeted about it but I kept I went with a joke tweet mm. but like I keep thinking about it and it sounds like woe is me or woe is us we have to cover games but at a certain point you're like people are burned out like oh, you know, yeah. uncovering Dudes. games yeah. it is Don't like and we're in the phase yeah. of the year yeah. we're Don't in the phase of the year me. where we should be easing off now yeah I agree, and I agree. like January's I, pretty empty guys I yeah know. exactly but and then the dark just got bumped as well so did it yeah, did, yeah. oh so when to March yeah. Oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. also uh, if, uh, the wild crossover between Dave the Diver and, and Dredge <gasps> Dave, so Dave the Dredger that. Yeah. 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 that was like two of the best I was next to Lucy and Lucy was like Gossiping me too. Yeah, I was this is her elder brain. Exactly. exactly the same. So do we know what that is? I don't really even. I don't know. I don't know if you have. I is assume like you a... have to have Dave the Diver, and then there's I think just it is like a, yeah. content. In yeah, it. yeah, Dave the Diver. Yeah. Dave okay. the Diver. That's yeah. what it seemed to me because yeah, like the um the put, shopkeep. Came put out Dave the Diver in Smash. Did they announce something for Smash recently? Like new, there's new something. Spirits coming to Smash or something? Maybe. I, I don't know what surprised. that was. I saw something. Like the Holy Spirit? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the final spirit. You all need it, gamers. <laughs> That's right. Um, Sakurai's like, <laughs> heathens. <laughs> this Jesus. is the final boss you'll never win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Light No Fire. Are we going to talk about that? It looked cool. Wait, which one was that? That's, That's the Sean Murray Hello game. Oh, yeah. yeah, that did look cool. Yeah, the, I mean, I... I the style's me, cool. I just, to me, it kind of just looked like No Man's Sky, but like... Not? Birds, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is at yeah. this point. So yeah. I, I really have nothing to say yeah. on it, Could except it say... just looks like more No Man's Sky, but kind of repurposed for something else. Like, obviously. what's the hook? That's what I want to know. Yeah, like when it was cool, like, oh, you could build houses wherever you want. Can you kill them? Like, can you? <laughs> what are we doing? Are we yeah. Yeah. Can I steal the houses? But yeah. if everyone's playing together as well, is that on yeah? The same I think that's a big part. Of it's like it. a nice simulator. Well, like he kept. Nice. He, he, he they emphasize this is the first open world. Like it's not a universe. True, okay. It's a. I think the whole, whole thing is like we're gonna take a planet, and and try and make it as like playable, playable, and like give it the depth that it deserves. Um, and I think like it looked like a lot of it was like quite manual, like sure. moving around. And there's one point where they have like a a thing. What do you call it? A bird or something? They're flying, yeah. and they were flying by and as they passed someone who was just building something in the middle of the sky. Mm. So I feel like it's like, it could be like a Minecraft turn to, and it's also got that fantasy aesthetic on top. I'm I'm in a similar spot where it's like, I don't really understand yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. like I can see that it's enough. It's a new idea for them. Yeah. That it could, I mean like, they sustained No Man's Sky for 10 years off something that people looked at and were like, this is not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's true. It's a, wor- it was a world premiere. Yeah. World premiere. World premiere. Yeah. They didn't say it anymore. I'm disappointed. He, he did in the beginning. He, yeah, but like, but I, why do, I don't want off. Jeff to say it. I want yeah. the voice. I want the yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah. 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 I want flute world guy world to premiere. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, I had the, what's, uh, uh, what's the, the Atlas one? Fan, oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah. Name, that is a, that's a bad name. Yeah, for me. Uh, look, like, yes. yeah, it's like bravely default flying fairy yeah. energy. Yeah. However, uh, it does look pretty fucking cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not like a Sony. massive persona person, but yeah. at the same time, I look at that and I'm like, I look yeah, sick. Yeah, Sojimo's on it. Yeah, Hushno's on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's big. I'm, I'm like, can't came for that. So. And then Wispers on I really liked the a, a bunch of those trailers, but also a lot of them bled into each other. Oh, in yeah, mind. yeah. Uh, I feel like this is the year where I feel truly oversaturated with like first person shooters that are kind of vibrant in a way. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm like done, quirky like, characters. Yeah, like the, <laughs> uh, not too characters. like it, like the Akumi Nakamura game kind of blurs into finals, which blurs into sure. that um that other game from the Lightspeed, Lightspeed game like team, and I'm just yeah. like, 
I feel like it's enough, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Now the games that stick out, are like, there's a few games that like, <coughs> the ones that stand out are the, like the ones that are like a reminder that there's other things happening and like weirdly Blade is that and yeah. you know, Life the is Strange. Life is one? Strange. Well, it's not like teams, Strange, like uh, Lost Records. Or yeah, something, something like yeah. that. I think that's, the, this is the first time I've come away looking like the, the big blockbuster show pieces that just aren't doing it for me. Um, even like God of War, I was like, sure. Okay, I love God of War, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm alright with that, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, this there's just something to be said for things that look exactly the same being like put into a show that's and then like speeding through everything. Yes, yeah. that was it. There were, yeah. there were like four Fortnite trailers. Yeah, and there was know, like EXO Mecha. There was EXO oh, totally. Yeah. There was yeah, like, like all the, there's like four of the Genshin Impact style games being yeah, advertised at once, and I don't know which ones they are, which ones are being published where and what. And it's just like, okay, I know they exist for other people who got like enjoy, but you're right. I I think there was just, this came back to our earlier conversation where when you're just being relentlessly pummeled with trailers, you can pay attention at the start, excuse me, but by the end, you're just kind of like, all right, we're still doing this, are we? And Mm. because we're like, where's three hours of ads we just got went through, you know what I mean? And it, it just, because there's so few personal moments within that show, you just sort of, I don't know. I just became numb to it all by the end. Yeah, you know? yeah. and it so. used to happen at E3 as well. Remember when we used to sit down in front of the TV and like blast through trailers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I think it it reached a point <laughs> eventually where publishers and like platform holders figured out that it doesn't work. And Nintendo did well where the Treehouse stuff would come up afterwards. Yes. And they would do like intricate segments like this is what's actually going on. Yeah. It feels like it needs something like that because, like, I I I have I could not. I can't imagine the Akumi Nakamura game in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, like, right. clearly. I just feel sure. jumping off a building. Jumping, and then there was like a gate, and then and the then yokai. Yeah. Yokai at the yeah. end, yeah. and the other like, characters looking up. At like, moments, yeah. like the finals bleeds into it, sure. and I'm just like, oh, I can't remember. But you mean, I mean, maybe like, instead of, I mean, I know obviously the Game Awards is the big end of the year thing. But yeah. I mean, some of the stuff could, I mean, Xbox do it now. Like, yeah. PlayStation do it. They have like, not, their showcases. Yeah, yeah like sure. spread throughout the year. Nintendo does it. It just feels like, as long as you can put together a good enough show, yeah. people will remember. We'll do it. We should do on games, per, games per second, dude. We could, have, we could have some one trailer per second. <laughs> <laughs> you like, thought you were getting? Thought you were early. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. this shit? Jeff would be like, "Why didn't I think of that earlier?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Call but us, like, man. Yeah. Those will not get the viewing figures, and no. like you know, every year the game awards, like no. the, yes. the numbers go up. The numbers go up, and yeah. it's because it is that one event. Yeah, That's and huge. I don't think you could sustain that. For sure, for sure, but. You know. Any other major announcements that we missed, you think? Mm, Anything else? For me, um, got the list. Doing a scroll. Yeah, no, I think. Yeah. Black Myth Wukong still looks tight. Oh, that still was uh, Ronin. Cool. Uh, cool. Listen, I'll, I'll cop to this myself. Go on. I was just, during the thing, I was like, I'm just going to tweet, game looks cool. Game looks awesome. And I just did that. Sure. Black Myth Wukong was one of them. And then I remembered and I deleted the tweet because uh, Rebecca sure, I saw put that. out the, sure. the, the oh, thing yeah. about that studio is just like f- not like there's some toxic stuff mm-hmm. happening. Sure. But they're like sure, sure, sure. some real rough stuff. And like I was I looked at the game. I was like, this looks awesome. It does. I forgot that happened. Yeah, it's I worth acknowledging that. that is that's something that's ongoing. I, di- I like I said, I deleted my tweet sure. and I'm sure people saw it. I'm like hypocrite. But like. I, d- I just forgot in that moment. Mm. And yeah, Rebecca's um, reporting on it is worth checking out. Yeah, it is. On yeah, for sure. I agree. Also, her piece on Bungie from this week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. done the amazing work recently. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Alleged. Are you guys getting a little burnt on Souls like games, though? I mean, you probably not. Uh, well, I, I don't play Souls like You really games. only stick to. Huh, I, I, play, I play enough to know whether it's going to hit for me. And the only one that's hit is Lazar P. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, that one didn't get anything, did it? No, uh, that was wasn't another expected. major. Was it wasn't nominated for action. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I mean, like, that. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a, it's a disappointment for me, but yeah. Sure. Um, I just find myself like watching a lot of trailers now, and as soon as it cuts to gameplay, and I see, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna get to that boss. Circle yeah. strafing. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah, circle strafing and like a a red flash yeah. for a yeah. big yeah. attack. I'm like, oh, here we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not burnt out on it. I still really enjoy them, and so. I like um, I like easy games. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll be say like, it here. I, no, yeah, no, uh, maybe not easy. I like, an easy game I like too. to be challenged, but not like that kill myself. Of, that kind of wall that goes up, you need to yeah. like push yeah. through I'm it. Tired, I get man. that. Yeah, yeah, you get it's it's a lot. It is a I lot. I got four kids. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. Jake's four kids. Kid of reveal on the podcast. Kid oh, reveal. Right. Family yeah, reveal. Yeah. 
I um, love it, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my, it's my, my life isn't thanks. hard enough. I, yeah. I'm, like yeah. max, I'm like maxing on being as stressed as possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that was pretty much all of the. Do briefly, uh, MIA's still Hollow Knight. Where is that oh, game, dog? Where is, Silk Song? <laughs> where is that game, coming. dog? Good lord. Uh, I, I, you know, they're working on that stuff, but like at, at this point, it's like weird how long it's yeah. been gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, oh like what's happening yeah no no um kind of like i mean you shouldn't have expected it but like usually hades is here in some sort of fashion yeah. like the yeah. super giant uh they're going into early access this year uh, no, 2024 yeah Sorry? next year i would have expected <coughs> but they're also the kind of team who like can be like we showed our trailer we're done we're yeah. working um, they're not a massive studio as well, so I'm sure this kind of rigmarole is probably taking precious time and resources away from actually making the game. So it's probably a good call. But I just went in there thinking, oh, we might get to see a little more of Hades. Yeah. yeah. The one reveal that actually caught my eye was that first Berserker. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is, is that I misheard it. And I heard a me too. I heard the first oh, yeah. Berserk the first game. Berserk. First Berserk. And I'm yeah, like, wow. Like, like, all right. Yeah. All right. Let's go. And also the guy from the back sort of looked a little bit like Griffith. I was like, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, but that looked really great. And I, I, I'm not sure, yeah, what that is. Bottom mm. line. It looks like another Souls like. character design. The, character, yeah. the art design is just yeah. incredible. Was so that I was a level like, infinite game? I think know. it was think one so. of those. Yeah. 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 It might be wrong. Um, was it Code Veiny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You immediately were like Code Veiny. I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it did look cool. I think yeah, that, that was awesome. that one stood out to yeah. me. So if we forgot the biggest announcement of all time. Um, Apex Legends, Final <laughs> Fantasy. Oh, God. oh, that's right. Yeah, what's yeah, that all about? What's going <laughs> so on like, there? Well, they right. just finished a Post Malone thing, and now they're doing a Final Fantasy thing. <laughs> I think honestly, them. like, I think that's really Good cool for, them, for Apex yeah. because I we used to play a lot, mm. and then I took a break of like a year, and I jumped in, and it was. A nightmare I am, of I am, who a are nightmare all of these characters who I don't have access to because I'm not paying for them. <laughs> mm, um, mm. But like again, we're talking about ways of keeping yeah. the community engaged. Like definitely tapping into what do you call post Malone fans? Uh, post Malone posties, post posties, post posties. Post posties. posties. <laughs> in Australia. In Australia, a postie is the, what we call the postman. Yeah. Post yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I like though, like Fortnite kind of opened the door for everything being crazy and stupid. Yeah, like Warzone now, you can shoot <laughs> Nicki yeah. Minaj with a gun as spawn. Yeah. Do you remember uh, there was a time in in the, in the industry where people were so protective over the way their yeah. IP was presented? Now it's, yeah. like, now it's like you want some? What? You want them to yeah. do the L dance? Yeah. Go yeah. for it. It's it's wild. <laughs> I heard a story years ago that uh, a game wanted to have, and it was a Square Enix game, and they wanted to have a character hum a tune from Final Fantasy in it. Right. And Final Fantasy. Oh, were they like, were like, no, absolutely no. not. No. And so then to see them in Apex, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so it's weird. And that's, I think that's awesome. If, like they are loosening the grasp on the on the brands. Yes. But hopefully not to the point where it gets diluted. And you know, I don't know. I don't want to see Cloud. Is Cloud in Fortnite? Yeah. Right. No, I just, no, I just no, assumed no. Stuart is shaking no. his head over there. No. He knows. Oh, he's not. Because this man plays Fortnite, yeah, okay? So he knows. We got a Fortnite right. over here. Yeah, he knows. Like, Fortnite. <laughs> I, I, I want to see cloud flossing. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. I would. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's definitely, definitely going to happen. Anything that becomes it. popular eventually has to come to Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. That's the rules. That's the rules of popularity. Uh, the, uh, Rocket League. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is it called? Rocket Racing. Rocket Racing. Yeah, that looks interesting. But it's in Fortnite. It is. Well, it's not in Fortnite per se. It's... The Unreal. So those three games, there's the Lego game, there's the Fortnite Festival, and there's the Rocket Racing. They're Unreal Engine, like Unreal Editor in Fortnite. So they're basically making these games with Unreal Engine in Fortnite, okay. but they're se separate standalone yeah. games. Yeah. Okay. So but you still access them through the Fortnite client. This is where it gets complicated. So yeah, have like, you heard I'm of the sorry, Metaverse? I yeah. 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 I don't have you know. heard like, of the you know, Metaverse? They're basically, like, you know, Roblox, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. This is Fortnite is becoming Roblox. You okay. log into the client, and I didn't know this until I logged in recently. When you when I used to log into um, Fortnite, there was a button that said play, and right. I'm like, cool, I'll play. Now you log in, and it's a whole bunch, bunch of, of shit. No, it's games. a fucking nightmare. Now it's like it, I don't actually like the interface at all. I think it's shit. But like basically, it's a whole bunch of games that people have made in um, in Unreal Engine in Fortnite. And this is these are three of those games, but obviously they're made by proper studios as opposed to just fans. Yeah, it yeah. confuses me though. Like as a as a consumer, I'm like, wait, so is this like Rocket League? Like they made a new game? Yes. Like a full on. Like, yes. Cool. And as like given how many times we saw the Lego trailer, it was quite yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, we didn't really yeah. know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. just it's just a also a weird like messaging roadblock where like, oh, I want to play that new Lego game. Okay, download Fortnite. Yes. Yeah. What? But I think they'll push through that pretty quickly though. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, like, every when you... kid has Fortnite. 
Yeah, when you get to the critical mass on that, like with Roblox, like Roblox is so disgustingly successful. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if yeah. You, and I can absolutely see Fortnite recreating that model and it makes a lot of sense yeah. for sure. So I, I told my uh, my sister I'm getting the kids a Switch and I was like, I'll get you some games and whatever. Nice. And my sister went, oh, what, what? they really want to play building games. <laughs> and I just went, do not download Roblox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely not. not. Download Dragon Quest Roblox. Builders. Yeah, Dragon Quest Builders is a great one. Yeah. You will learn. No, totally. that's like Minecraft. Minecraft, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. what a year. What a year. What a year. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, um, that was a good one. Well, I mean, I, well, think, the, I think the show... It? Well, hang on. The show Hi, was everyone, not... And then he the, fades the, away. <laughs> <laughs> the, show, the show was not, I don't think. But the year was good. The year was really good. The year good. was good. Yeah. Four so, games. We had four games, for not for the industry, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. It is... Definitely. I... It, if I I can't remember what we talked we talked about this in Giant Bomb on the couch uh, mm. and, uh, in the night show but like it feels like the challenges stacked against the video game industry are more than ever these days mm. with like we we when there was one boss which was like blockchain it was hard enough yeah. now we just yeah. walked into like a wave based like AI blockchain <laughs> yeah, sure. layoffs all yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff interest but, rates yeah exactly yeah. but I, I'm still quite hopeful for a kind of like stabilization in the future I'm excited for the future if anything this the game awards was a good moment to be excited about what is coming still and it's hard to do that right now especially with every all the layoffs and stuff it's yeah. good to acknowledge it but it's easy to be like uh, i mean definitely it's for my good. i mean because i spoke with a lot of developers this week a lot of um media people to be honest most of them are like yo next year's gonna be worse that's what that's mm -hmm. the clear yeah. message that came from everyone that i spoke to yeah. because they're like we're seeing the unsustainability of these of the overall triple a model which has been called out for years, yeah. but now you're looking at an interest rate like cat. The price of cash has gone up significantly, yeah. which we don't really talk about in our no. in our world. But like, it is a huge factor. Unfortunately, when you need the line to always go up, when the line starts to go flat, then business people start making these decisions. Yeah, the model does yeah. fucking work all sucks. Of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. That's just how it is. Unfortunately, it fucking blows, but that is how it is. And so, with the cash, like price of cash being what it is, you're going to see more of that. I think. I think as well on the media side, there's going to be a lot of transformation in that era. Like as yeah. AI comes in and it just takes a wrecking ball to massive sections of the media industry because you won't need to click on articles pretty soon. It's all yeah. just yeah, going to be Google's rolled already... up. It's all going to be rolled up yep. to you and just fed straight to you. And so you, the, all those websites that rely on ads and whatever, they will die. I'm going to be AI generated. We, yeah. you don't need that's me. right. I'm going to be a we hologram. Lo we lost yeah. to I'm a going for hologram, which that's means tight. I got a Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hurry up. <laughs> we lost to a VTuber this year's content creator of the year. You know what yeah. I mean? So I, I was like, times are changing, I was man. the Homelander in the audience. It was yeah, like the yeah. years ring. I'm just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't see, I think there's some cool games coming, obviously, but I think in terms of the industry, yeah. I don't sense a lot of shrink. optimism no. yeah. from what I hope from people I spoke to. These people really know what they're talking about, mm. by the way. Yeah. And so I definitely think we're like in for definitely another rough, yeah. another rough year. I, I had a quite a similar, quite a similar experience with the people I tried to, and it's really sad that the kind of it was couched in a that this conversation was couched in excitement for the thing that they were making. Sure. Yeah. So it's like we're really excited about this, but the industry is going to be like in a rough place yeah it's like it's it's such a heartbreaking like totally. dichotomy to experience yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely 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 yeah. how do i spin this to like a... I, I mean hey everybody thanks hey. for listening hey. what a great, great, great catching up yeah. Yeah. yeah well this is our final podcast for 20 is it is it i think we should do, we should one, do one more, more. let's do oh, one, okay. more. one more we've got one more in us that's, what do we got? we got one more in us what and what week is that christmas week christmas a little christmas drop yeah that's it let's just have a bit of fun with it okay, okay. Do some relaxed band stuff. Yeah, we, we would have talked about all the games. We could just hang out for a bit. A bunch nice. just came out. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, especially because we haven't been playing too much right yeah. now. We've been kind of totally. I've been traveling. This been traveling and yeah, yeah playing. Fortnite. Famously, you well. can't play games on the go. So. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have no the devices. Lenovo <laughs> Legion Go. I bought one. Yeah, I, yeah. I saw yeah. five ads for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I touched one. I don't love it. It's so a chunker. It so is. Too... I describe it as the Game Gear of the modern day. <laughs> I 100 yeah. agree. 100% agree. No, Grub had it uh, in the office the other day, Jeff Grub, and I'm not going to make the motion, sure. but. You know how you can have you you have the the, the, the detachable the, uh, the detachable upright yeah. mice. Yeah, not good. So, well, I'll I do just, it. It's a lot of this going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I I don't ever want to be seen doing, doing that. that. <laughs> I'll be on a flight. Just yeah. 
Don't don't mind me, guys. So, so. I'm having a good time. Like the switch was bad enough. Playing fucking one two switch. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see the controller like it's tiny. So yeah. like, no, no. So, imaginary macarena. What's going on? I have a I have a gif. Oh no, I have a video of you and Dave doing the milking. Yeah, cow. it's just oh, I was going like this really yeah. slowly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> looking into each, into each other's eyes like. Beautiful. Yeah. We did that for her before you buy. I was doing it, yeah. and it's just zooming in on my face as I'm doing it. Like. I love it. Well, video games. Video games. Video games. Yep. Thank it's, you all for being here. Yeah, good seeing you guys. Yeah. Nice to be it's in always person. Good to do yeah, yeah. Great to have Stu here as well. Yeah, shout out mm-hmm. to Stu. And um, yeah. thanks for the edit, Stu. Yeah, appreciate it as always. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> you um, can. Yeah, yeah. You can, it's fine. fine. Yeah. You just got to cut around all the Donkey Kong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Had to put in some of it, actually. Yeah. Well, we, we there's got to be a bloopers reel yeah, 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 to yeah. take us end. out. Yeah, it's just Jake and Sean. Oh, boy. Sure, sure. <laughs> just put some quiet Donkey Kong music in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Oh, my God. Aquatic ambience is called. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Tam, thanks for Yeah, yeah thanks for, thank you for having me. It's always great to have you. Always a pleasure to be here. Well, that's it, folks. I'm Jake Baldino. This is Skill Up. This is Lucy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You left the gap and we <laughs> should have helped you out. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> where's he going to go with this? No, it's fine. Well, I never know it. how to end uh, it. Thank you, everybody, for listening, watching, clicking the like button, rating us on podcast platforms. It really helps. We appreciate you guys. Uh, but that's it. So tie your shoes and go to bed. <laughs>